Yeah. It really is just dominating possession. Is it without any lack of respect? It's a training game almost for them right now, John. Surprised that Kevin De Bruyne hasn't come off. Just really, you know, the great, a great hour or so uh, and protect him a little bit for Tuesday. But he's on the pitch still and he's having a magnificent performance today. 13 minutes to play. Palace one, Manchester City four. Stephen Warnock, James McFadden, Statman Dave with us this afternoon. Izzy Christensen will be alongside Ian Dennis at Goodison. We've uh, spent a fair bit at the start of the show talking about Everton, but from a Burnley point of view, have they left it too late, is he? Good afternoon, afternoon. everyone. Good afternoon. Um, from a Burnley perspective, <clears throat> I, I, I really do think if there's a win today, I think they could throw themselves right back in the mix for, for Operation Survival. If they lose, I think that's them out of the question. That's it. If they, I mean, if they pick up three points today, Stephen Warner, they go on to 22, which is what Luton are on at the moment. They'd be three off Forest. They'd be, uh, they would be four off Everton uh, with potentially more points deductions coming. Yeah, I, I think if, if Everton lose today, I think they're in huge trouble. I really do. I think they could go. Um, I, ju I watched the game the other night and credit to Sean Dyche because I, I'm, I'm getting a little bit frustrated watching Everton at the moment because I just think you're not changing anything. I mean... You continue to do things time and time again. What do they say? It's the... Uh... Uh, yes, that, that's what they say, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we all know definition it. Definition of madness. Definition yeah, of madness, yeah. yeah. Continue to do the same thing over and over again and expect different yeah. results. And I think that's where I'm at with Sean Dyke. Is, do you mean just overall? Are you, are you talking about in-game management and tweaking things? Or are you just like, hang on a minute, they haven't won in 13 and the, the setup is essentially the same. It's exactly the same. Yeah. And in, he will mm. argue back and say, well, we've created, and Dave will probably back him up here with stats against how many how many goals potentially they should have scored. But it doesn't matter because you're not scoring them. I know you're trying to create as much as you can. I watched them against Bournemouth last week. Arguably one of the worst performances I've seen from a Premier League team this season. Didn't look like a Premier League team at all. But when I watch them, it's, it's long ball. Then he changed the game in the second half by bringing footballers on. Anana is one of the most overrated footballers I've seen this season. I mean, you're talking about a player who everyone's saying he could be sold in the summer for 50 million. Well, if someone's willing to pay 50 million for him, I will be very, very surprised. The size of the guy, what is he, 6'3"? He should be dominating football games. You watch him for Belgium, he can dominate a game because he's got... The, it's almost like he feels like, well, I can express myself more because I know I've got better players around me. But when you're playing in a team like Everton who are struggling, you should be putting yourself in, in the market if you do want to leave or making sure that Everton survive. He's... I'm, I'm glad so, he's not so, playing today. So is that... That's not... If you talk about what he does for Belgium compared to what he does for Everton... Is he that, demands the ball. So, it, so he hides at Everton. On, OK, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, is yeah. that all no, on no. him? Yeah, 100%. Right, right. Okay. Because if you're the best player in the team or you feel like you are the best player, go and show it. Do you think De Bruyne would hide at Everton? Absolutely not. He'd go and demand the ball and he'd make things happen and make sure it happened. I watch Anana. He's weak in the tackle, doesn't win headers. I'm saying he's six foot three, whatever he might be. I think he's... He's cowardly at times when he plays. And I just watch him at Everton and think they're better off not having him in the team. Um, James, it, are you part of the Anana fan club like say, Stephen is? Say what you really mean, Stephen. <laughs> uh, just have, James. <laughs> I, I think you're trying to back. drive his price down. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that's mine game. Uh, trying to drive I'm his, his price agent. Down. <laughs> I think that um, I like Anana. I do, I like him. I think that there's a lot of potential there, but you need to remember he's young, and I think you you nailed it a bit with the style. Um, the style is to it almost bypasses the midfield, and it does then become about you know getting up and support, trying to win your second balls. Um, they have a lot of cross balls. They are missing, for me, that creative player in the midfield. I know they create chances, um, but they're missing someone, as you know, Stephen's saying, could it be Onana? Potentially it could be, to, to really demand the ball, get get in the, the final third and, and find that that killer pass or, or try something, you know, out, out of the ordinary, something a bit different because it is very structured um, the, the the way that Everton play. And if you know they don't score from cross balls, all the pressure then comes on to Calvert Lewin and the, all the noise have been been about the, the fact he's not scored. I know he got his penalty the other night. Um, Beto when he comes in. You know the pressure is so much on the striker to score the goals when 
you look at you look at most teams now. It's, it's goals coming from midfield. It's you know defenders are scoring goals. Um, the pressure for Everton is solely on the number nine to score goals. And when that doesn't happen, he's the player that comes under the most scrutiny. When I think that you know there could be more. De Curry, you know scores goals because he gets up in support and he seems to link up well with Dominic Carvalho. Hasn't Carver scored Lewin. since December, though, has he? I know. Well, that's what I mean. He he's the only one out of the midfielders yeah. that you would look at and say he's a goal scoring midfielder. But but, but they're not scoring enough goals from midfield or from different parts of the. The, the pitch, Dwight McNeil's chipped in with a few, still not enough with the chances that have been created. So there has to be less of an emphasis on the, the striker has to score the goals. Of course, strikers have to score, but they're there in, they're in the team to do so much more. You know, compete for aerial balls, bring the, bring others into play. It can't be that the striker has to do all that and he has to be the one to score goals. But, someone, someone else has to step up. But at, at what point is he, do you think... Um, at, at what point do you go... Oh, it will come. If we keep playing this way, it will come. Or at what point do you go, we've got to change something here? Well, I'm looking at the team sheet right in front of me for today and the Everton fans after the game at Newcastle midweek were, were crying out for the players that came onto the pitch, Gomez, Garner, who have got that spice of creativity that the guys are talking about and that what Everton need. Just you could argue that Everton's structure in under Sean Dyche doesn't necessarily... Um, need or want creative players in there you want physical ball players that, that are willing to get up and down the pitch and win headers hence hence the conversation around Anano and I'm looking at this and I'm going Gomez and Garner are both starting in the centre midfield for Everton today and then up against them Cullen and Burge in the two midfield roles for Burnley who have been I think that's Burnley's best midfield partnership as that too I think the game today is won and lost between those four players who who gets hold of the ball and interestingly, I don't know if Statman's still with you, but yeah, he is, yeah. Everton, Everton tend to win more games when they have less possession. Mm. And the players that Dyche has selected today are ball players. So I'm very intrigued to see how this game un unfolds this afternoon. So it's when you, when you look at possession, as Statman mentioned before, they're averaging 38% possession when they've won games. Uh, they've not got anywhere you know, near to 50% possession when they've won. And that's just a big thing. I think... The, the interesting side with Everton, as you mentioned before, Stephen, they just don't take the chances. They, they should have scored an extra 13 goals in the Premier League. At the moment, only Sheffield United have scored fewer goals than them, but they should be around mid-table. And if you've got expected points models, they're around ninth. So they're creating enough. But, but, but the other point in all of this, James, and, and you will know this, you don't go to Goodison today as a home fan and go, yeah, it's all right. If we if if we let Burnley have more of the ball, that's that's absolutely fine. You yeah. don't. What, whatever the style of football that Burnley are playing, the psychology of a of a fan is. Hang on a minute. It's Burnley at home. We ought to be dominating. Yeah, and I think the players will feel that as well. Uh, they, they they have to be dominant. They have to. You don't want to allow the opposition the ball. It just seems that you know when Everton are sitting more defensively and able to hit the counter attack, maybe in those games actually less chances are created and the players are, are more aware that you're not going to get as many chances so you have to take it and it's not that they ever think oh, you don't need to take that chance but when chances keep coming you don't, and you're not taking them then the, the nervousness can creep in and if you're playing against that if you're playing against a team that creates chances and they're not taking them you feel that what they're they might take the next one, but we're still in this game. We can go and we can go and we can get a result. Um, and for Everton, you can't play against a Burnley and say, "Let them have the ball. We'll sit off them," because the fans would never accept that ever. Back to Selhurst Park. Has the comeback started, John yeah. Southall? Five four to Palace. Palace two, Manchester City four. And this will probably annoy the manager, Pep Guardiola, who's slip on the left-hand side with the cross. And Odson Edward just got in front of the defender, Diaz, and nudged it in to make it Palace 2, Manchester City 4. Yeah, Pep's reaction there, John, highlighted his frustration, giving away a very, very poor goal. But just before then, again, they had a chance, Edward. Poor, poor possession, lost by Kanji on the far side. And another big chance. So, although it's been so comfortable with City, really, really... Them, it's very unusual to give races a soft goal. Yeah, Real Madrid will be watching this, no doubt, and they'd have picked up a few things, I think, over the piece today. Crystal Palace 2, Manchester City Just four. To, Just to confirm, because it confused Stephen Warnock, and I'm sure it confused some others. It's not 5-4. <laughs> <It's, laughs> no, no it's, it is Crystal. <laughs> yeah, right. Stephen it's, looked very confused. Yeah, yeah, a couple, like, yeah. No, Stephen, it's not 5-4. It's not yeah. uh, that, that, that'll be in about 10 minutes' time. <laughs> you got me excited. Uh, Palace 2, <laughs> City 4. And 
Norwich had just started to feel the pressure a little bit. Becky Ives. Oh, they just two minutes to go to 90 minutes. Then whatever added time we had, Marcus Harness just had, he couldn't get it out from beneath his feet inside the box. But that was sort of the second shot that's been coming in. Ali Alhamadi on as a sub down the right-hand side into the box. He tried to lift one over to the keeper. Norwich's concentration levels here have to be top-notch if they are going to see this through. At the minute, they are. Norwich won, Ipswich nil. But they, I mean, they could have been three or four up, couldn't they? I yeah, mean, that's they, the thing. They could have been because they've been brilliant on the counter-attack. Josh Sargent has had chance after chance. There was a shout for a penalty. He played a brilliant one, too, with Ashley Barnes into the box. It was deemed just outside the box. But they have been wasteful in front of goal in front of this second half. If they lose this, they'll only have themselves to blame, I feel. Uh, so 1 0 there, and they're a minute away from the 90. Uh, Crystal Palace 2, Manchester City 4 in the Premier League. There is that early game in the National League as well. They're approaching full time at Boundary Park, and it is Oldham 1, Rochdale 1. Do you, you know, when we're talking about how pivotal Everton Burnley may be at Goodison, could you, from a Luton point of view, James McFadden, could you look mm. at Luton Bournemouth in a similar way? Yeah, I think the way the, the, the fixtures are, um, certainly, you know, for Luton, they're looking at it saying, you know, Burnley can get closer, uh, but if Everton lose, they can get closer to Everton. So, yeah, I think it, it could be, Luton will be, Luton will be in there fighting to the end. I think that they're a team that can get results. Um, but I think it's maybe not as pivotal as, as the Everton-Burnley game for what's at stake for both sides, because, as Stephen says, if Everton lose the game, it puts massive pressure on them. It gives the teams below them a huge lift to come and, and catch Everton. Um, but if they win the game, then, you know, it almost knocks the stuffing out of Burnley and, and the, the kind of momentum, the slight momentum they've built over the last few weeks. It knocks, it, it, it takes one less target away, or one target away for Burnley and who they could catch. So I think that depending on the outcome of the game, then Luton, Luton will approach it without trying to focus too much on what's happening elsewhere. I think the big thing for Luton is is that they need to win today because they've got Manchester City after, which is, if you were to lose this and then lose heavily against Manchester City, it's a, it's a real bad game to go into because you're playing Brentford after that. Then you've got Everton two weeks after that who are in and around you. You don't know the position Everton they're going to be in, but if you can draw Brentford and Everton into you even closer, that's exactly what you've got to do. But it's got to start today. But with 10 injuries to the, the, the Luton team, it's so, so difficult for them. And, and also, it's a bit like talking about playing Burnley at home here, is he? You know, but Bournemouth are, are flying at the moment, as, as we heard from Chris when he gave the team news earlier. They, they are on course for their best ever Premier League tally. Chappers, was that to, was that yeah, to me? Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just hearing about Deno's trip to Ibiza. What? <laughs> <laughs> Could you repeat the question, please? What in in 2024 or or in 1994? <laughs> he's laughing and he's he's got a tan as well. Has he? It was last week, Chappers. Right, actually, well, I'm I very mean, jealous. If I was going to guess a destination for Ian for. <laughs> few days I'm not sure Ibiza would have been top and um, uh, it was about Bournemouth as in you know there's an expectation on Luton I think this for this game and yet Bournemouth have already gone past their points tally of last term and if they win today they'll have six away wins in a single season which is the best they've ever done in the Premier League you know on the one hand you think Bournemouth at home great opportunity but not the Bournemouth that we've seen in recent weeks no, absolutely, and I, and I think, you know, they've quietly gone about their business. They've played some fantastic football under Areola, and I think that there's really um, positive signs for them to progress next season. Uh, let's go back to Selhurst Park, John Southall. Crystal Palace 2, Manchester City 4, but they're giving this a bit of a go, I've got to say, in the last last few minutes of the game, Crystal Palace, which will give them hope for uh, for times to come. Hamada just on the edge of the area there, his shot was a bit weak, straight through to the keeper, but it's been better from Palace, Mark. Yeah, oh, hold on has. a minute, because here comes De Bruyne, De Bruyne onto the edge away, of the penalty but... area, but Joachim Anderson's done well there, and now go behind for a city corner. What we have seen, John, is glimpses of Elise and what he brings to this team straight away. He's coming off a cameo role, but he's Good range of passes, switched player a couple of times, good pace, good dynamism, so you can see what he brings to this team. And they're just making a change now. Bernardo Silva is the man who's gonna come off and it is gonna is gonna come on, sorry, and it is Kevin De Bruyne who's coming off and what an afternoon he's had. Two goals, one assist. He has been terrific.
Yeah, it's a magnificent performance. Pep, we delight for him in terms of Tuesday coming up and what he's going to bring to this team. But a superb display by Kevin De Bruyne. Great to get him off injury free and not a bad sub in David and Silva as well coming on. Absolutely. Into added time, Palace 2, Manchester City 4. Norwich have got another two minutes to get through. Might feel like 20, Becky. Oh, I think so because Ipswich are really pushing here. Ben Gibson just hauled over Ali Al Hamadi as well, just on the edge of the box. No free kick was given, much to the distress of the Ipswich bench. But they are pushing and they are probing here. They've literally got about 90 seconds to hang on. Norwich 1, Ipswich 0. Uh, let's uh, talk more about Manchester City. You've just whispered but you want to talk about Kevin De Bruyne in a, in a good way you're about to eviscerate another player no no <laughs> all right. listen no isn't it funny though we've been like after Phil Foden playing in the week in the 10 and everyone's been saying is that his best position and De Bruyne answers like that that's the quality of De Bruyne playing in that 10 but, uh, uh, there's but that's been a the quality the mentality of that squad exactly and that and that's the big thing but the the the, the big thing for me is is that Guardiola is He's almost planned out Phil Foden's career as to how he wants to integrate him into the team, drip feed him in. Then you look at how he plays off the wing. He scored his most goals this season, most assists from that wide area. Then he plays in the middle of the midweek. And it's like, you're going to play there, but you're going to wait until De Bruyne's ready to leave or we feel like you're going to step in and play on a more regular basis. But De Bruyne's display today just shows why he's the best in that position. But but also, um, we talked about this, James McFadden, with, uh, with Cole Palmer, that you can still function in a 10 role by being out on the right and, and coming in and affecting the game that way. I suppose it depends how much space you have then within the team setup. Yeah, especially for City, because, you know, at times it's, it's the fullbacks that step into the high, you know, inside, advanced, you know, 10 position. But if it's a Phil Foden playing on the right-hand side, they'll go and hold his width and then he'll come in inside and, and find himself in that inside channel and then the width will come for the full-back going outside him. Um, I think that, you know, you look at Akanji coming on today at left-back, going and playing high up the pitch, Lewis stepping into midfield from the, the right-back position. They're so fluid um, and they're, such, they're so in tune with each oh. other that they get the best no matter what. If it's Foden... It, it, there's not, there's no suggestion here that they can't play in the same team. It's just that you know when when De Bruyne is not there, Foden showing that he can play in there, he can make a difference, he can be the main man. But I agree with Stephen at the minute, De Bruyne. If you if you're picking one or the other to play in there, it's going to be Kevin De Bruyne because he what he brings to the team, because he what he brings out Erling Haaland as well. You see him for the goal as soon as as soon as De Bruyne is in that position, Haaland makes peels off. To, to make the dart forward because he knows that De Bruyne won't take the extra touch he knows that exactly when the ball will be played where it'll be played and that's a chance to get the goal but it's Man City can play they, they don't really play a formation they might start out and you need to write it down obviously and you need to try and visualise it but when the game starts they don't they don't play in a set formation players find space and it doesn't have to be a traditional 10 you know De Bruyne will drop deep and then Foden if he's playing can come into that position or one of the defenders steps in and plays in midfield they're so fluid that it must be so tough to play against and try and you know nullify the threat because they, they always seem to find a way Final whistle has gone at Carrow Road. They've held on of Norwich. Becky Eyes. It's party time at Carrow Road for these Norwich City fans. 1-0 over Ipswich this afternoon. Ipswich pushed and pushed, but they could not find a way back as they've done many times this season. Norwich's concentration was top-notch. The work rate from both these sides this afternoon, I have to say, was excellent. But the difference in the end on 40 minutes was a Marcelino Nunes free kick, 25 yards out, hit the inside of the post, went in the back of the net. And that's all you need. One goal makes a difference. They have plenty of other chances on the counter, but they couldn't seal it. They will not care. Seven-point cushion now between them and the chasing pack in terms of the playoffs. As for Ipswich, well, they remain top only for now. Has there just been another twist in this title race for the championship? Norwich won, Ipswich nil. Let's take you through the top seven, shall we, now in the championship. So Ipswich have 87. Leeds, who've got a game in hand there at Coventry this afternoon. If they win that, they'll go top because they're on 86. Equally, if Leeds don't win and Leicester win, then Leicester could go top. They're at home to Birmingham. They're on 85. Then you have Southampton on 74, West Brom on 68. The win for Norwich uh, takes them to 67. So they have a seven-point lead over Coventry, who have a couple of games in hand on the side above them. As I've said, Coventry are at home to Leeds. Preston will probably think they're not out of it. 
They're on 59. They've got two games in hand on Norwich as well. Preston this afternoon uh, go to Watford, and that's a Watford side who are unbeaten under Tom Cleverley. There's, there's uh, some. Uh, uh, oh, let's go to John Southall and Mark Warburton first of all. There's, a, uh, there's an amusing end to this game in, in uh, the physical battles between half the Crystal Palace team and Erling Haaland. <laughs> a ridiculous couple of minutes here where Haaland and Lerma, there was a challenge. Lerma went down. I don't think there was much in it. And I think the referee made more of it than actually was. Called the two players over. Here comes Grealish looking for the fifth, smashes it over the crossbar. And we probably wasted Mark Warburton about two minutes and there was nothing to see. Yeah, they used the term handbags. It wasn't even as, as aggressive as that, John. I think it was a, t a touch on Lerma. Lerma went down and, and a few rolls around, and then the players, Palace players joined in and made a melee out of it, and there was nothing in it whatsoever. So a bizarre end to what's been a really entertaining game. Yeah, as you say, uh, Mark Har Harlan then getting involved with a few of the Palace players, but it was nothing at all, and there goes the full-time whistle. And in the end, a very comfortable win for Manchester City. It's finished Palace 1, Manchester City 4. Probably fair to say City not at their best in the first half. Won all at half-time, but they rectified that in the second. Rico Lewis with the second, two minutes after the break to make it 2-1. The third, Grealish on the left to De Bruyne. He cut it back to Haaland, and he finished it off from four yards out. 19th Premier League goal of the season. The fourth, De Bruyne again on the left-hand side. Grealish back to him, and De Bruyne smashed it in to make it 4-1. Two goals for De Bruyne and a one assist. He has been terrific this afternoon. Palace, fin Palace finished strongly, made it 4-2, slip cross. Edson Od Edward with the finish, just got in front of Diaz to make it uh, Palace 2, Manchester City 4. Real Madrid to come, Mark Warburton on Tuesday night. How do you assess Man, Man City today? Yeah, I think Pep would be delighted with it. It's a tough place to come, but uh, they came here, they dominate possession after a, a shaky start. They showed their quality. I think we must make mention, by the way, about, of uh, Wharton for Palace. Yeah. So we spoke about how good City have been this afternoon and Kevin De Bruyne, but Wharton has adapted to life in the Premier League almost effortlessly. And it's not too early to say there's a bigger club to be watching him. But for Pep, a good afternoon, hopefully injury-free, and they're ready for the Madrid game on Tuesday. Yeah, just watched Pep Guardiola walk down the touchline there and down the tunnel. Didn't look massively pleased but I, he must be pretty satisfied with that no, I think there's an altercation on the halfway on the, on the um, dugout there. I'm not sure what was happening. I didn't really see it, but a few words were had, and maybe that uh, upset Pep somewhat. But he must be delighted. You know, three points, goal difference, okay, a stoppy goal to give away. But after, all in all, a good afternoon's work. Yeah, so massive games come for Manchester City on Tuesday night. They take on Real Madrid, and they'll go into it on 70 points. And for now, they are level at the top of the Premier League with Liverpool. It's finished Palace 2, Manchester City 4. I mean, he's probably already moving on to thinking about Real Madrid. So are there elements of today? That, that will concern him. I know they've won 4 2. I think, I think the, the Rodri in the first half, very uncharacteristically, Mark, in terms of the mistakes he was making, the areas of the, the pitch he was losing possession, and against a team like Madrid, they'll undoubtedly be punished. So he'll be wary of that, but as I say, very unusual for Rodri. But the positives are getting De Bruyne back in here. The one shot for John Ivory is Edison. Not playing Edison today and getting some minutes unless he's happy to go with Ortega for Tuesday night, perhaps. Possibly. Yeah, I, I think he'll be resting Edison, making sure that he's fully fit, giving that extra little bit of time. I think the, the big thing when you think of Manchester City is, without being disrespectful to Crystal Palace, is that they know they can win this game at a canter. When they go into the Real Madrid game, concentration levels lift, they go higher. I was just wondering what the conditions are like as well, because when, when we're looking at the players here, the shirts of the players, like, it's blustery, isn't it? It's difficult yeah, conditions it's to play in. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, 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 Gre Gre Grealish, Grealish's hair and, and De Bruyne's hair is blowing so much. It looks like they've got beautiful wigs, well, like wigs got on. Locks, <laughs> locks, <haven't they? laughs> it's not a problem I normally have, Mark. <laughs> uh, Dave, what stands out for you from that? Um, Kevin De Bruyne has now scored 100 goals for Manchester City. Only Sergio Aguero and Ryan Sterling have managed more for the club. Uh, James, what are your final thoughts on what you've seen this afternoon? Yeah, it was comfortable enough for City that... And any any time Crystal Palace looked dangerous was through probably slack play from City, taking the extra touch, maybe, you know, try to force it. But they get the job done and it has been a tough place for them to go over the last couple of years. So they'll be delighted. And as Stephen says, I think that they'll be much more uh, in tune for, for the game against Real Madrid because it's a totally different test. Yeah, you, you I mean, uh, you would go along with sometimes you don't mean to do it but you might just slightly take your foot off the gas in a concentration 
scenario in a game like this. Yeah, it's different. I mean, for large parts of the game, it, it, as John kept saying, it looked like a training exercise. Um, and, and Palace, to be fair, they, at times they did put up a fight, but there's there's a lot more intensity to to the game against Real Madrid. There's a lot more concentration required, and it's not it, it's not an, an intention of the players to to switch off, but they can become a bit slack because they're not punished. But when you play against a team like Real Madrid, if you play that that way and you're as slack as you were at times today, then you will be punished, and it's it's very very difficult to then you know flick the switch mid game. But they'll be they'll be ready for that game, no doubt about it. Uh, great, thank you, James. Thank you, Stephen. Cheers. Are thank you, you are you going tomorrow or not? Now, have you decided? No, we're going now. Okay. Gonna, we'll find a way to get in. And right. if uh, if anyone wants to get in touch with me to uh, hammer any of the players, <laughs> right? Yeah, I was going to say. DM me. <laughs> not a problem. <laughs> I'm, I'm Dave's pick- looking at me thinking <laughs> I've got a list here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think I think if, I think when you go out the studio, you may already have a few messages <laughs> on, here you've, on here you've hammered. Uh, right, let's uh, turn our attentions from the day's football to the day's rugby league. Two matches in. Super League today at three o'clock. Hull FC against Huddersfield. Are we in for another whole walloping, Richard Stead? Well, we might be marked. It's oh, 11th, God. also known as second bottom, against eighth place Huddersfield. FC make three changes from the team that lost 34 10 to Kingston Rovers on Good Friday. A debut for 18 year old Logan Moy on the bench. Four changes for the visitors, including Jake Connor back to face his former club. They won 26 6 at London last time out. Huddersfield are favourites, but they are inconsistent. As you know, Mark, sadly for Hull FC fans, they've been consistent in the fact that they've lost all but one this season. Yeah, thank you very much, Richard. Uh, so that's at three o'clock then later this evening. Catalan against St. Helens, as things stand. Saints in fourth, Catalan in fifth. Uh, they have both got 10 points. Warrington went top of the table uh, last night with a 34-8 thrashing of Leeds. Sam Tompkins uh, watched that game, still connected to Catalan, joins us now. Afternoon, Sam, how are you? Afternoon, chappers. I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Is is the season playing out as you thought it would so far, even though it's early days? Yeah, pretty much. I think Wigan and St Helens um, have been probably the top two sides with, with Catalans just below them. So um, it, it set up tonight's game, you know, brilliantly. I think, you know, the, the probably the two shocks have been how poor Hull FC have been and, and how good Salford have been. You know, two sides that, that we thought opposite of. We thought Hull FC might be OK this year and uh, we thought Salford might struggle, but they're probably the two shocks. But, yeah, the uh, the normal culprits have been good. I mean, just just why with Hull? Because they have, they have conceded a lot of points. I mean, they've been on the end of some absolute wallopings. I mean... 54-4 against Lee. They conceded 30 plus in the in the whole derby last week. I think it's purely the defence. I think the the ease in which Lee Leopards were able to score a couple of weeks ago was was embarrassing for for the whole side. Uh, and I know Tony Smith's got a big job to turn that around because he's not got any amazing players that I think can turn it around on their own. It's going to have to be a, a team effort and. You know they've not started well, but as you said, we are we are pretty early in the season, only a quarter of the way through. When you watch Warrington at the moment, what what are you seeing that's maybe different under Sam Burgess as head coach? I think they've got a little bit more commitment to each other. They look a little bit more desperate at times than they they have done in the past. Um, for me, they've got some really good attacking players that haven't quite clicked yet. You know, the combination with George Williams and Matt Dufty, you know, two amazing attacking players. Now, George is playing really well, but Dufty's got some some improvement in him, I'm sure. So I think when it does click for Warrington, they'll be very good. Uh, but at the moment, I think there's, there's still a few teething problems. I think Sam Burgess has brought in a bit more of a team culture and, and they do look like they're working harder for each other than they have done in the past. And has he given them a greater freedom? As in, as in I don't mean this contradictory, but sort of responsibility for themselves? Yeah, a little bit. I think he's he's put that onus on the players to to find their own sort of identity in, in the way they want to play. Um, you know, they've got you know George Williams, the best halfback in the league. So, you know, Sam Burgess doesn't know anything about attacking more than George Burgess, and I think he's than than Sam Burgess. I think he's gonna he's probably gonna have to you know guide them through the season. But yeah, he's certainly. You know the kind of coach I think he's, he's proving to be is one that wants the players to to find their own way around the field. How tough is this for Saints against Catalan tonight? Yeah, it's it's always a tough tough place to to go. You know, fly over to France and and get a win. But you know, Saint Helens will be 
battle hardened from from the Good Friday win against Wigan, uh, which was a, an amazing game. I think that was the benchmark for the rest of the league. Everybody looked at the way that St. Helens and Wigan both defended uh, and, and both attacked at times. And, and it was clear that those two teams are probably a little bit ahead. Um, I'd say Catalan are just behind that. Um, you know, leading leading the rest of the pack. So um, I think it could go either way tonight. But you you will know from from your time there and still involved there that they will back themselves against anybody. Uh, well, I mean, they'll yeah. back themselves against anybody full stop, but particularly at home. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think, you know, as as a club, you know, Catalan are very proud of of playing at home. Um, and, and I also know the difficulties of of playing for an English team and flying over. It's something they're not used to now. You know, the Catalans fly over to England every week, so the travel becomes the norm um, and, and doesn't cause too many issues where, you know, Catalan like to make it hard, certainly in the early parts of games for teams, you know, when they've, they've had the flight over and they've stayed in a hotel and it's not the normal routine. The starts of games are huge, so that'll be the focus tonight for Catalans. OK, How, how's everything going? Is, are you missing it? Uh if I'm honest, not one bit. <laughs> um, no, the I think I was, you know, last last year was a struggle for me. You know, I was I was playing on on one leg for large parts of it, so I was certainly certainly ready to retire. But now with the work I'm doing in the broadcasting, uh, I feel like I'm, you know my game days are just different now. But yeah, I'd be lying if I said I was missing it. Did you did you ever think you'd be saying it's preferable to next to John Wilkin every every week as opposed to playing? No, no, I know. that's the that's the only downside <laughs> I've got to work with John Wilkin. Aside from that, it's going really. Well. Take care, Sam. See you soon. Sam Tompkins Thank with you. us on Five Live Sport. That match, by the way, Catalan Saints on BBC Three tonight uh, from eight o'clock. Kevin Howells is actually watching some cricket. Yeah, I am. I mean, the sun is absolutely glorious here in Manchester now, but the wind is silly, ridiculous. We've had a hold up in play again, I'm afraid. We started at ten past one with this match, really important game because it's defending champion Surrey against Lancashire. Lancashire selecting both the Australian Test star Nathan Lyon and Tom Hartley, both spin. There's a lot of debate about that in the last couple of weeks. Of course, Hartley did so well out in India for England. But in the end, the first spin here, just nine overs into the game. Surrey's new signing, again, England-related man. Dan Lawrence and Lawrence removed Jennings. Keaton Jennings, Lancashire captain for 11. Corden bowled in just his second over. So Lancashire now a 48 for one. But the big story here, Mark, just amazing, really. Division two, nothing like a good start to the season. At Lords, a record-breaking start for the Glamorgan captain, Sam Northeast. A triple century, which in itself is amazing stuff. But now, the highest individual score just a few moments ago against Middlesex and Lords. The team score is 620 for three. And do you remember Graham Gooch back in 1990? 333 yeah. against the West Indies. North East is currently... 335 not out. What a start to the season. Tremendous stuff. Really exciting. Lovely to hear that at Lords over on Sports Extra. We're back here in Manchester right now. And this, again, is a really good contest. As I say, Dan Lawrence doing well. Though, I mean, know. I know they're playing with the Kookaburra now, but I, yeah. I, I thought I thought it was meant to hoop around and everybody gets skittled for 90 in yeah, April. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I think the Kookaburra probably has made a bit of a difference uh, to things. I mean, I've been listening in uh, off and on to what's been going on there at Lords, and it does seem to have maybe one or two drop chances. I think there was a miss stumping as well when North East was in the 290s. <laughs> what, you know, what a let off in the 290s. <laughs> However, um, yeah, uh, clearly um, things have not really gone the way that we might have expected at the start Amazing. of the season. Amazing. Yeah. Kevin, yeah. thank you uh, very much. We'll go around all of our three o'clock uh, matches uh, already today. Manchester City have won 4-2 at Crystal Palace and Norwich beat Ipswich by a goal to nil in the National League. It finished Oldham 1, Rochdale 1. But we'll go around all our three o'clock after Joe in the news. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Israel's military says it has recovered the body of a man taken hostage and held in Gaza. Elad Kadzir was kidnapped during the Hamas attacks on southern Israel on the 7th of October. In the US, a number of leading Democrats have urged President Biden to pause arms sales to Israel after it apologised for killing seven aid workers in Gaza earlier this week. Officials say at least seven people have been killed in Russian strikes on Ukraine's second biggest city, Kharkiv. There has been damage to residential buildings and a children's nursery.
The Royal Navy has seized nearly £17 million worth of drugs after it intercepted smugglers' speedboats in the Caribbean Sea. The Defence Secretary, Grant Shapp, says the seizure shows the Navy's commitment to disrupt and dismantle drug traffickers. And dozens of UK flights have been cancelled as Storm Kathleen brings strong winds and potentially the warmest day of the year to parts of the UK. Gusts of up to 70 miles per hour are expected and temperatures could rise to 22 Celsius in eastern in England. BBC Five Live, the voice of sport, coming up on Sunday. A classic rivalry renewed at Old Trafford. Here you go, off you go. I can hardly hear you, John, to be honest with you, but the noise is so loud, it's incredible in here. Some games are bigger than others in Liverpool, that's always a big game. Manchester United, yeah, ask me after the game if I enjoyed it. Rashford knocks it into his own path in the area, cuts back, shoots and scores! Looking to place it across, and Salah's there to tap it in! Live Premier League Sunday. It's Manchester United against Liverpool live from here at Old Trafford. Sunday at 3.30. Listen on BBC Sound. This is Five Live Sports with Mark Chapman on Five Live. Listen on BBC Sounds. So, so far today, Crystal Palace 2, Manchester City 4, uh, Norwich 1, Ipswich 0 and in the National League, Oldham 1. Rochdale won. So uh, we'll go around all of our three o'clocks. Leeds are in second in the championship. They're a point behind Ipswich after their defeat at Carrow Road. They're at Coventry, who are seventh and seven points off the playoffs. Charlie Slater. And so opportunity knocks for Leeds. Win today, go top. They're in once in a generation form. Haven't lost in 2024 with 13 wins in that 15 match unbeaten run. As you say, Coventry now seven points off the playoffs with six games remaining. Lose today, the top six may suddenly look a stretch, having still to play second, fourth, and first. Plus the small matter of an FA Cup semi final. They make one change O'Hare in for Latibodier. Same for Leeds, Gruev for Byram. This, a massive afternoon in the race for promotion and the playoffs. So Leicester have dropped out of those automatic playoff places after just two wins in seven. They take on Birmingham today, who are two points above the drop zone, but ended their losing streak during the week. Aaron Paul. Hey, but Mark, the Foxes are back on the prowl after that result from Carroll Road. The motivation is clear, says Enzo Moresca. The club's bleak financial picture may offer an added incentive, but win today and their game in hand, and Leicester will be in pole position for a Premier League return. Birmingham don't take well to taking on Leicester at home, losing their last five against the Foxes. Both sides are unchanged from wins early in the week, which means Pats and Daka leads the line for the hosts. Uh, the league's top scorers are Sami Smodic and Adam Armstrong, and they face each other this afternoon at Ewood Park. Southampton are in fourth. Blackburn trying to avoid a relegation battle. Will Perry? Well, the summer can't come soon enough for Blackburn. That 5-1 victory at Sunderland on Monday was their first win in ten and desperately needed. They're now five points clear of the relegation zone. Six games to play, two of those against Leeds and Leicester. John Eustace's side unchanged from the win at the Stadium of Light. Southampton can forget automatic promotion. Their 22-game unbeaten run in the Championship seems a long time ago. Two wins in six for Russell Martin's side with a 14-point cushion on seventh place. They can begin to prepare for the playoffs. Three changes from their 97th minute winner at Ipswich. Walker Peters, Rothwell and Brooks in for Bree, Stuart Armstrong and Adams. Uh, West Brom are in fifth and unbeaten in their last eight. Their opponents today are Stoke, who are 18th but have lost just one of their last four. Lee Blakeman is at the bet 3-6-5. The win today could leave West Brom 11 points clear of seventh with five games to go. So they're closing in on booking a playoff place now. One defeat in 12 for Carlos Corbran's team. Only Leeds, Ipswich and Norwich have picked up more championship points than them in 2024. As for Stoke, three wins from their last six, four points picked up from their two Easter fixtures. A win this afternoon would put them on 48 with safety almost secured for another season. Uh, Rotherham were relegated last night, so it's all about who'll finish in the other two places in the bottom three. Sheffield Wednesday are 23rd and are three points adrift. The last time they played QPR, they scored a 94th minute winner, but that was in December. QPR are now in good form. They've lost just one of their last eight. John Akers is at Loftus Road. Yeah, five wins in there as well, Mark. It's some run and it's taken them six points clear of the drop. One more win would take them to 49 points and that could well be enough to keep them up. Fine changes from the team that won at Swansea on Monday and it still looks pretty strong, which speaks volumes. Also five changes for Wednesday, who faltered of late. Just one point taken from their last four matches. 
this game, along with Stoke at home and then Blackburn away, look like their best chance of picking up much-needed points between now and the end of the season. Huddersfield in that final relegation spot as things stand there up against Millwall today, who are just four points above them. Katie Smith. And neither will like the fact that Plymouth grabbed the win last night to move four points clear. So it pushed Millwall down to 20th without a win in three. Neil Harris, who was brought back in, of course, to alleviate the pressure, has seen his initial positive results slide away, capped off with a shock loss to now relegated Rotherham on Monday. Said he could have won that game three times over. While Huddersfield could actually jump out the relegation zone today, depending on Birmingham City's results and with the win themselves. In the programme notes, boss Brighton writers urged fans to forget recent history, forget the last 10 out of 12 seasons, he says, of survival battle and back the side today, both managers making three changes. Uh, OK, thank you. Let's go into League One. Portsmouth edging closer to automatic promotion. They're nine points clear of third place Bolton. And they take on Shrewsbury today, who are unbeaten in their last three. Flo Pollock at Fratton Park. Afternoon. Portsmouth can't mathematically secure promotion today, but Pompey fans have the finish line and the long-awaited return to the second tier firmly in their sights. They make three changes after drawing midweek with second-place Derby. Notably, Owen Moxon is rewarded with a start after scoring his first Pumpy goal. And Australian Cassini Yengi comes in to the side to partner top goalscorer Colby Bishop. Shrewsbury are seven points clear of the relegation places, but they want to get a few more points to be comfortable. And they make two changes as manager Paul Hurst looks to continue his impressive second, second spell in charge. Let's go into, uh, oh, elsewhere, by the way, in League One. Second place Derby, who are five points off Portsmouth. They aren't playing this weekend. Bolton are away to Bristol Rovers. That's at the top. But at the bottom, Carlisle will be relegated if they fail to beat Northampton. But, Mark Webber, even a win might not be enough for them. Yes, Mark, in the brewing town of Northampton, Carlisle are drinking at the last chance saloon because even if they win, they'll still be relegated if Burton win their game today. Northampton and Carlisle came up with each other last season. It really has been different fortunes. Carlisle have been in the drop zone since late October. Northampton fans will be raising a glass to the local brews tonight to being mid-table today after seasons of yo-yoing between League Two and League One. One change both sides. Akin Adimeo makes his first start since the new year for Northampton. Carlisle, Georgie Kelly starts for Jordan Gibson. So that uh, vital game as far as Carlisle are concerned involving Burton, they are at home to Oxford. Into League Two, lead to Stockport, are four points clear. And they're taking on Sutton, who are just one point above the drop zone. But, as we were talking about earlier, are going for their fifth win in a row. Ellen Ellard. Yeah, Sutton's steep upturn of performances has come at a good time as they battle for survival. But if they are to find that fifth consecutive win, they'll have to get past a Stockport side that put eight past them in the reverse fixture. Just one change from Sutton's 3-1 win over Swindon. Lewis John in for Ryan Jackson. For Stockport, Odin Bailey, scorer of the only goal last time out, makes Dave Challoner's starting 11. Neil Byrne slots into the back line. Anthony Sarsovic, he starts, as does top scorer Tanto Alafe. Now, Mansfield are in second there at home to Crawley we've got another top v bottom clash elsewhere though Wrexham going to Colchester Wrexham are in third Colchester in the bottom two Paul Scott Yes, and Colchester are in decent form, though. They're looking resilient, Chappers, since appointing Danny Cowley. They're finding victories hard to come by, though. Just one win in eight, but just one defeat in eight in that time as well. So if they can turn those draws into wins, they should be OK. There are one point below Sutton, but do have three games in hand. Wrexham in town today for the first time in 20 years, the last time they met in Colchester. Phil Parkinson was in the home dugout. He returned to the club where he began his managerial career. His Wrexham side, four points off top having played a game more than leaders Stockport. Forest Green Rovers are at the bottom of the table and they take on fourth-placed MK Dons today. Into the Scottish Premiership, the old firm is tomorrow. Full commentary from midday on Five Live. We're at Hibs St Johnston this afternoon with Ailey Barber. Well, this is the penultimate fixture ahead of the league splitting with Hibs currently a point outside the top six. Not always the easiest thing to get your head around if you're not used to it, but basically to have a chance of European football, you need to be in the top half come the split and the expectation here is that Hibs should be there defeat today though coupled with a Dundee win would mean that they would miss out anything else and they still have a chance opponent St Johnson will ace it just a point above the relegation playoff places so there is plenty on the line for both teams here today elsewhere in the Scottish Premiership Livingston Aberdeen Ross County go to Kilmarnock Dundee are at home to Motherwell and St Mirren face hearts and just keep an eye on one story uh, in League 2 in Scotland today Stenhouse Muir will go up if they beat East Fife or 
if they draw and Peterhead fail to win, or if they lose and Peterhead lose and Dumbarton and Spartans both fail to win. We're at that stage of the season. Our base in the Premier League this afternoon, Goodison for Everton against Burnley. Let's go around all our Premier League three o'clock, though. We'll start at Kenilworth Road. Luton in the bottom three and without winning their last ten in the league and with an awful injury crisis, they're taking on Bournemouth, who were after their fourth win in a row. Chris Coles. And that sort of form has sparked European talk around Bournemouth. They haven't really been part of the conversation, but they're only four points off seventh, with games against those directly above them to come. In the short term, six points from their final eight matches would set a new top flight club record, very achievable, and would represent a job extremely well done by Andoni Iraola. Luton continue to battle with that severely depleted squad. We're not in must-win territory yet, but this feels as good as to end their winless run, to keep in touch with those above them and to inject some positivity heading into the final push. To Aston Villa next, who are actually looking to avoid back-to-back -back defeats for the first time this season. Their visitors are Brentford, who are winless in their last day. Pat Murphy. Brentford have won just three league games since November, but injuries have much to do with that, especially to their back four, with Tony not fully fit due to a muscle injury, only a sub today. You'd expect them to be even more vulnerable, but the resilient group they are, and I reckon Villa will see this as a trickier game than the last one against Manchester City, because that was, a, that was an open goal, really, because today they're simply expected to beat Brentford, especially as you have Martinez, McGinn and Watkins back. Just four points for the past four games. Not exactly a winning endorsement for the Champions League aspirations. Villa really need three points today. Let's go to Molyneux next. Wolves have already got one more point than their final total last year. And a win against West Ham this afternoon. We'll see them overtake them in the league and they could go as high as seventh. Maz Faruqi. So potentially into the mix then for European places, Mark. Speaking of Europe, West Ham could do with the momentum a first win in four would give them today heading into Thursday's Europa League quarter-final against Bayer Leverkusen. Edson Alvarez returns from a two-match ban straight back into the starting 11 for West Ham. So Mikel Antonio drops to the bench. Tommy Doyle and Santiago Bueno coming in for Wolves today with Craig Dawson and Matthias Cunha, both subs as they return to full fitness. Cunha, along with the still absent Huang Hee Chan and Pedro Neto, responsible for a lot of Wolves' spark going forward this season. Let's go to Craven Cottage, Fulham against Newcastle. Eddie Howe side yet to be involved in a goalless draw this season, so enjoy, Henry Moran. And what have you done? But yes, 116 goals in the 30 league games so far, and they've not kept a clean sheet on the road in 11. For Fulham, meanwhile, there have been at least three goals in each of their last nine. Nothing says nil-nil more than those numbers. Marco Silva makes three changes from the poor defeat at Forest. Castagna, Kearney, Willian all coming in. Newcastle will feel they should have beaten Everton on Tuesday, but Eddie Howe still described four points from six as a decent return. Two tune changes today Joe Willock and the no longer suspended Anthony Gordon coming in uh, if you want the Champions Cup Rugby Union this afternoon then that is on Sports Extra we've got Bordeaux uh, Saracens from 5.30 uh, the 3 o'clock game is on there now that's Exeter uh, against Bath here on Five Live, all the goals as they go in in both England and Scotland as promotion and relegation issues start to get decided. This is a big game at Goodison. Everton against Burnley with Izzy, Izzy Christensen and Ian Dennis. Thank you, Mark. Absolutely massive game down at the bottom of the Premier League table, bearing in mind that at the start of next week, we will hear news of that second likely point deduction for Everton Football Club. They've already received a six-point deduction. Had it not been for that, they'd be 14th in the Premier League table. As it is, they're currently four points clear of Luton, and Burnley, of all of the promoted sides, are actually showing the best form of all. In fact, Burnley have collected six points out of a possible 12, the same level of points that Everton have actually collected since they last beat Burnley in mid-December. The Premier League anthem is being booed by the Everton supporters, as here are the two teams. Pickford is in goal. Coleman, Tarkovsky, Branthwaite and Mikolenko, the defence. Coleman comes in for Godfrey. Garner and also Gomez come into the midfield for, uh, for Everton. There's uh, Young, Garner, Gomez, McNeil, Decore and Calvert-Lewin. As Calvert-Lewin replaces Beto, Onana has picked up a little bit of a knock and the other player to drop out for Gomez is Garner Gay. As for Burnley, well, they've made just the one change and it's Asignon instead of uh, Vitinho. 
after his suspension. So Muric is in goal, a back four of Asignon, Esteb, O'Shea and Taylor, Cullen, Berger, Odebert, Larson, Foster and Fofana. Is it Christiansen? It is such a pivotal game for both sides. Absolutely. It's got that feel about it at Goodison Park. Been here so often and you can feel the kind of excitement and the tension amongst the fans. They know that this game is a must win just to give themselves a bit of breathing space. And on the flip side, Burnley, a win for them today surely would bring them back into the mix for Operation Survival. Certainly would. I mean, in many ways, their, their little mini revival has crept under the radar, hasn't it? It has, and they've had a little bit of adversity against them. And we're looking at two clubs this afternoon who tend to deal well with adversity. I think this game is poised to be a messy game of chess. Two managers going at it, I'm sure, because they've picked ball play inside. I expect the ball to be on the floor a lot more than in the air, partly because of the wind. I think that could play a factor in the way that both teams play today. But either way, this is a must-win game for both teams. Yes, it's certainly extremely uh, blustery. Uh, Storm Kathleen is on its way, and despite the, uh, the blue skies and the sunshine, it's a little deceiving here at, uh, at Goodison Park. As now, Goodison will remember uh, Jimmy Husband, who sadly passed away recently at the age of, uh, of 76. He was a, a title-winning member of the side in 1970, alongside players such as Alan Ball, Howard Kendall and Colin Harvey. And uh, ironically, Jack Hickson, a North East talent scout, the guy who spotted Alan Shearer as well as Michael Bridges, had actually spotted Jimmy Husband and could have easily have got him to sign for, uh, for Burnley instead, as he now, a talented winger, is fondly remembered here at Goodison. Goodison remembers Jimmy Husband as the blue shirts of the Everton players break away from the edge of the centre circle and Burnley are in their chain strip, the yellow shirts and the black shorts. Huge, huge game and after sports report, our attentions will turn to the top of the table. After Manchester City's 4-2 victory at Crystal Palace, we'll have commentary of Arsenal at Brighton at 5.30 and then tomorrow, of course, we're live at Old Trafford for Manchester United against Liverpool at 3.30. Sandwiched in between the old firm, Rangers Celtic, and Sheffield United, Chelsea. Well, this is down at the bottom of the Premier League. Our referee, Michael Oliver, is just waiting for the, uh, the say-so to blow the whistle as the uh, players take to the knee. No room for racism. The firm message that is applauded from those inside Goodison Park. And we're underway. BBC Radio 5 Live and BBC Sounds. I'm sure you'll hear the wind rattling around off the effects mic on this blustery afternoon as Cullen lifts the ball early and forward and then Berger will head it back as well. Bramthwaite rises in the air and uh, Everton, who picked up that point at Newcastle in, uh, in midweek, will just hope that that, uh, that late revival at St James's Park can be some sort of a springboard to end this barren, barren run, is he? Yes, a point at St James's Park is a good result, given how talented that Newcastle squad is. And the psychology between these two teams here today, with Burnley dropping two points midweek and Everton gaining a point midweek, it has to be advantage Everton today, along with, obviously, the home crowd here at Goodison. They're on their worst run of form in 67 years, 13 Premier League games without a win. Six points out of a possible 39. Worst run since 1957, when Ian Buchan was the manager. And uh, failure to win today would actually equal a club record from back in 1937 under Theo Kelly. That's something that they will hope that they can end as they look for a third successive win against Burnley this season. They've also had a win in the League Cup as Mikolenko is sent scampering forward on that far side the 
left. Everton are attacking the park end of the ground in their royal blue shirts and white shorts. And in the sunshine, it's a, a quick throw from the, uh, the left, and it goes back. And then here is, uh, is Branthwaite as the Burnley supporters make their presence felt after that short trip to, uh, to Goodison, up to Calvert-Lewin. Might come to, uh, to Garner, taken away from him by Decore. Passes it out to Coleman. Coleman with a diagonal ball in, and well claimed by, by Murich. Certainly his return to the starting 11 has helped with their revival. He was a, he was a regular last season in the Championship. But this is a, a fourth successive start for... Uh, for the cost of an international. Yeah, and listening to, you know, general chat around Burnley fans about the impact that Murich has had since coming back into the team, there's a little bit more of a sense of safety around his presence in goal for Burnley, and it doesn't really... Co it's not a coincidence that they've managed to pick up results when Murich has been back in, really confident, and they're just claiming that lofted ball in from Seamus Coleman with ease and presence. Usual goal service as well on a Saturday afternoon. Rotherham, of course, relegated last night from the Championship. The only issue that actually can be settled today is Carlisle potentially could be relegated from League One if they fail to win at Northampton or if, indeed, Burton were to win as well. And talking about League One, the leaders, there's been a goal at Fratton Park, Flo Pollock. Portsmouth 1, Shrewsbury 0, League One leaders are in front. Ball whipped into the in across the face of goal. I think it might have been an own goal. Portsmouth 1, Shrewsbury 0. 14 unbeaten and going well. John Massinho's side. There's that uh, header from uh, Asignon went up rather than away. Berger will try and tidy up in the midfield for Burnley. Been pushed back by Andre Gomez. He, in the end, has to clear it long. Branthwaite's header forward. Garner then plays the back. It was a positive introduction from the bench against Newcastle, wasn't it, from uh, from James Garner in uh, on Tuesday night? You lose track of the days, can't you, with all these midweek games? It was definitely Tuesday. He had that shot off the post, didn't he, when That's he came right. on? He curled the ball from the edge of the air and it came off the inside of the post. Really unfortunate. Uh, he's a player who's really progressed this season. James Garner. Coleman with a throw. Gomez tickles the ball forward. Garner then gives it away. And Burnley can break. And it was with Odebert. Fafana here. Plays it back to, uh, to Cullen. Cullen's diagonal ball spread out towards that far side for, uh, for Lyle Foster, playing wide on that, uh, that right-hand side. And just going to be interested to see if he does eventually drift into a central area. When I saw them away at Aston Villa, at times, he bullied the uh, the Aston Villa central defenders by drifting in off that wide area. Yeah, I think it's Vincent Company's way of getting more forwards into the team, playing Lyle Foster off the right-hand side. And early on in this game so far, they've Burnley have tried to find him twice up against Mikulenko. Perhaps that is an area that Burnley have targeted. Coleman volleys the ball away downfield. Wind assisted, it will go away from uh, Decore. Actually allows Asignon to play it forward. Won back, though, by Dwight McNeil. Former Burnley player, of course, Dwight McNeil. And uh, Sean Dyche against his former side two. 425 games that he managed Burnley. As Branthwaite, fairhead central defender, stands on the ball. And then the ball goes from Mikulenko back to, uh, to Branthwaite. Actually bypasses James Garner on this occasion to Tarkovsky, another former Claret, long searching ball. Headed away by Asignon. And McNeil will keep the ball in play over on that far side, the left. And the shadows of the park stand away towards our right-hand side. As we welcome listeners to the BBC World Service, wherever you are in the world, it's always a pleasure to have your company. Here we are at Goodison Park, vital game down at the bottom of the table. And Everton nil, Burnley nil, but Mansfield nil, Crawley one is a, a latest score in League Two. As here is Coleman, Coleman with a cutback and cleared by the Burnley defence as it comes back out towards Young and it goes for an Everton corner kick. News of a goal in League Two at Sutton, Ellen Ellard. Sutton nil, Stockport won. The ball came from a corner, worked round the edge of the area. First shot came in, well saved by Steve Arnold, but Paddy Madden was there to tidy things up. Sutton nil, Stockport won. That's good news for uh, Dave Challoner's side with second place Mansfield losing. At home to Crawley. Crawley, remember, seventh in the table themselves have been on a good run of form. They've won seven of their last ten of, of Crawley. 
So a couple of early goals in League Two. Nil-nil here at Goodison Park. Everton playing from left to right as we look. Corner kick near side the right. McNeil to take it. Both arms are locked. Then the referee has blown his whistle. Our referee, incidentally, is Michael Oliver. There was uh, a couple of players going to uh, to ground in that crowded area. Tarkovsky was was one of them. Fafona was the uh, was the other. As uh, the referee just having a a little word with uh, with Murich actually, who's been called off his uh, off his goal line. Burnley have every yellow shirt back in and around the penalty area. The wind buffeting around here at Goodison Park. Nil nil. Seven minutes played. Now the referee is happy for this corner kick to be taken as McNeil should be an in-swinger off the left boot. Tarkovsky makes the run towards the far post. It was, well, I tell you what, that was a devilish ball in, is he? Especially with the wind. That was teasing, wasn't it? Absolutely fantastic delivery from Dwight McNeil, in-swinging with his left foot. He just curled it into an area, teasing Murich, and it actually ended up going out. But that is where Everton can really capitalise set pieces. Everton remembered Jimmy Husband ahead of kickoff. Of course, he used to play for Luton Town as well. We can go to Kenilworth Road, Chris Coles. He was remembered here, Ian, before kickoff as well. Luton nil, Bournemouth nil. I'm sure this isn't the only game heavily impacted by the wind. Both sides really struggling to keep hold of the ball in tricky conditions. It's led to an entertaining start. Ross Barkley shooting Luton's best chance over from 25 yards. Luton nil, Bournemouth nil. There's a foul there on Calvert-Lewin. And that will be a free kick to Everton about 10 yards inside their own half. I would imagine that that first goal... Well, it was uh, 22 in all competitions, 18 uh, in the Premier League. Well, have given him a, the world of confidence to get that off his back. Huge, huge. But you know, knowing Dom, Dominic Calvert-Lewin reasonably well from my time at Everton, he doesn't he doesn't get phased by the pressure. And you can see that when he took the penalty, he was focused. It, it wasn't the most convincing penalty I've ever seen, but it went in the back of the net, and that is the most important thing. Nothing really materialised from that Everton free kick went all the way through and out for a, a goal kick. So we can go to Villa Park, Aston Villa, Brentford, Pat Murphy. It's nil-nil, but a half chance for uh, Brentford. And Buemo, free kick, hit the side netting from 20 yards. Cue uh, jubilation from the Brentford fans, 80 yards away, who thought it was a goal. Much derision from the Villa fans, accompanied by the occasional hand gesture. Villa nil, Brentford nil. Thank you, Pat. Aston Villa, two points clear of Tottenham, looking to try and consolidate that place for a Champions League position. For, uh, for next season. The Champions League returns during the week. We'll be live in Madrid on uh, on Tuesday night and Europa League quarter-final action on Thursday actually comes from Merseyside as Liverpool take on Atalanta. This is the Premier League with the other side of Stanley Park though here today as Burnley try and work the ball out of defence and in their yellow shirts the ball squirms its way out towards that far side for uh, Asenjong on the halfway line. Goes infield to Berger along the ground now it's with uh, Estev, his bright pink boots to carry the ball midway through the Everton half. Charlie Taylor passes the ball back. Cullen, Brun Larson, holds off the attentions of Decore. And Burnley now with O'Shea, back with Cullen once again. Coming forward, running away from Decore, just has a little nibble and then does indeed foul the Irish international free kick. One. We'll go to Molyneux, Masfaruki. Chance for Wolves, Ray and Eight Nori flashing over the West Ham crossbar with the strike hit with some pace from the right. It's been a positive start from Wolves. West Ham really haven't got going yet. Nil-nil, ten minutes played. Ten minutes played here as well at Goodison. Earlier in the Championship, Norwich beat the leaders Ipswich by a goal to nil. Manchester City beat Crystal Palace by four goals to two at Selhurst Park. Down here at the bottom of the table, that yellow shirt of Cullen rippling in the strong breeze as he hits that. And it goes all the way through for uh, for a goal kick. It's uh, been a slow, scrappy start. Yeah, and that's just moments earlier. That was the first time Burnley have got the ball down with Murich, and they started playing out from the back. They played some really, really nice football through the lines, trying to break off Everton's press with Decore. And anyone who's seen Decore play this season, he is so effective in the press. If you can kill him off and kill his enthusiasm, you then get out, and that is what Burnley have done so far. Goal in the Premier League elsewhere, it's at Craven Cottage, Henry Moran. No goal here, Fulham nil, Newcastle nil, Fulham by far the better side. Willian has just had two shots that have come close. Newcastle look tired, they look leggy, Fulham on top, Fulham nil, Newcastle nil. The, uh, the wind rattling its way through clearly has affected my hearing, although I am now told reliably that there's been a goal at Coventry, Charlie Slater. 
huge goal in the title race. Ellis Sims for Coventry gives them the lead, a yard out with a header from a corner kick, and it had been all leads before that. But Ellis Sims has his 14th goal in 11 games, nine gone. Coventry one leads nil. And not only that, because of Norwich's victory against Ipswich, they actually moved seven points clear of Coventry, so Coventry trying to close that gap for a playoff position. But Leeds United, of course, just a, a point behind Ipswich Town and yet to lose in 2024 in the uh, in the championship. Nil-nil it remains here at, uh, at Goodison Park. Not a great deal is happening so far. To hold we go in the Super League. Richard Stead. Ten minutes played in, it's 6-4 to the visitors. It took one set and one minute for Adam Swift to score. The only difference has been the goal kicking. Sutcliffe has crossed for Hull. It's FC4, Huddersfield 6. 12 minutes played here, ball given away by Burnley. Young to Decorey on the stretch, kept the ball in play. Sean Dyche not wearing a, a jacket top, he's just there with his smart slacks and his white shirt. A rather casual looking Vincent Company with a baseball cap, but Sean Dyche is animated as ever as Charlie Taylor comes forward on this near side, the left. Shadows of the main stand back towards Cullen. You can uh, you can feel the tension from the Everton supporters. You know they're, they're not really behind their team at this stage. You, you can, and, and Burnley are dominating possession so far in the game. They're really happy to keep playing, and I think what Everton have got, especially on this right hand side in Ashley Young and captain Seamus Coleman, is real solid. They're really solid, so it's forcing Burnley to keep the ball more, and Everton are just waiting to pounce. There is a nervousness around Goodison Park as Coleman with the interception preventing it from reaching Brun Larson up towards Calvert-Lewin, looks for the little flick on, Decorey making the run behind. Here is uh, Cullen once again seeing a lot of the ball, Josh Cullen. He's always been a, a tidy midfielder, you know, he had a lot of loan spells out from his days at, uh, at West Ham. If you give him the space, he'll look after the ball in that respect. Yeah, he can play and you can just see... He's just playing games at the moment with Everton's midfield, just seeing which areas of the pitch they're going to follow him into. He's come out into this left-back position to receive the ball already, and he's just looking to add that extra number to keep Burnley ticking over. I, I think so far, Vincent Company will be the happier manager. Well, no surprise that uh, this stadium has seen the fewest amount of goals at any other ground in the, uh, in the Premier League, just 33, and not much has happened so far in these opening 14 minutes as it remains goalless as McNeil makes the run, then slips it forward to Decore, right corner of the area, the cross from the cutback will be dealt with by Foster running back to put it out of play. We'll go to Kendall the throw, though, Chris Coles. Bournemouth so close to the opening goal, Marcus Tavernier, free kick left of the D, hit it really well and found the angle of post and bar, it bounced to safety, Luton nil, Bournemouth nil. McNeil's cross from the left cut out, Burnley up towards Fafana, good sliding challenge by Branthwaite, and Branthwaite shoots left-footed, and it was uh, a good 25 yards out from goal, and it was off target, goal kick, but the supporters appreciated the endeavour. Yeah, the, the Everton fans absolutely love a sliding tackle, that is what gets them off their seats. Branthwaite just killing off the counter-attack from Burnley, a beautiful sliding tackle, if you can call a sliding tackle beautiful, I just did. And then with his confidence, Branthwaite, he's just let one fly, he had a shot on goal, but it's gone well wide. Best effort so far from either side as Murich with the, uh, the clearance. Brun Larsen heads it to Fafana, tries to lay it off. There is Gomez, though, with his jet black hair in the centre circle. Back towards Pickford, all in green. Garish orange boots with his short sleeve shirt. Looks for the distribution, looks to try and ping it out to this near side, the right. Brun Larsen's header will see that ball drop out of play for, uh, for a throw. Morecambe nil, Doncaster 1 is a, a latest score. Uh, in League Two, Doncaster have been in a good run of form of late and uh, have taken the lead on the filed coast. Morecambe nil, Doncaster one in League Two. Here we are with Pickford. Hits it downfield again. Headed away by Foster. Picked up by Gomez. Gives it to McNeil. Mikolenko has stayed wide out that far side, the left. Ball then pushed forward for the run of Gomez down towards the byline. Last touch. I thought might have come off Gomez, but it didn't, and instead it will be a corner kick to Everton. Yeah, the first time Everton have got an advanced midfielder running beyond, and it was Gomez on this occasion running to the byline, looking for that cutback, but not quite coming off, and they've got a corner as a result, and I'm watching Ashley Young on the goalkeeper causing trouble, being a menace. Decore's in there, Garner is in there too, and it comes as it didn't even beat the first man, as it turns out, from that corner kick from, uh, from McNeil. 
And the ball then is with Mikolenko who turns. Mikolenko to Decore. Left side of the penalty area. Decore onto his right foot. Calvert Lewin was there. Gathered in well though by Murich in his near post. Yeah, they're looking for it now, Everton. They're feeling they're feeling the game now. They've got a couple of balls across. They're looking for the balls into the box at the earliest opportunity. It was Decore there looking to slide one across the six-yard box into Calvert Lewin, but Murich was better to it. Murich passes the ball out, Everton with the press, back it goes to the goalkeeper, didn't look too comfortable with the ball at his feet there, but eventually they get it out towards uh, O'Shea, and he can run forward midway through his own half, and he hits a right-footed ball, looking for the run of Foster, Foster couldn't just flick the ball on for Brun Larsson, who was running in behind him, Everton's clearance goes straight to Esther, Maximilian Esther on loan from Montpellier, six-foot-four defender, and then Berger dropping very, very deep. And now with that, uh, with O'Shea, now we can hear some Everton voices from the Gladys Street end away towards our left-hand side. 18 minutes play, and it's tense, and it's certainly tight. And Asignon has lost the ball, the right back, and they can exploit that gap now, can Everton. The cross, though, flag goes up on this near side. Let's get another update from that other game down at the bottom of the table. Luton, Bournemouth, Chris Coles. Bournemouth hit the post for the second time in five minutes. This time, Justin Clivert linking nicely with Dominic Solanke on the edge of the box. Clivert's right foot shot brushed the outside of the post. Bournemouth on top, but still nil-nil at Luton. It's the lack of conviction at times, isn't there? Yeah, it was an excellent win, you know, in possession from Dwight McNeil. Just caught in possession, Burnley, on that right-hand side, and it was a really slotty pass from the Corey as well, not staying on side it's the basics and that is just where the enthusiasm of the crowd just gets drawn out and they've now got to bring it back in again the Everton players that's the voice of Izzy Christensen here on BBC Radio 5 Live BBC World Service also available on the BBC Sounds app Tarkovsky's forward ball the core is header misdirected it will be a Burnley throw on this near side the left you look at Everton's fixtures, is he? They've got some difficult games coming up with Chelsea and, and Liverpool, Nottingham Forest sandwiched in, but you, you factor the game in here today against Burnley, Forest at home, Sheffield United still to play at home, and Luton away. So in that respect, their destiny is still in their own hands. It is, but when you're playing the teams around you, fighting there as hard as the games at the, against the teams at the top of the table as well, fighting for league titles, so... You know, every game is a must-win, and this one in particular. Get that ball rolling for both sides. Integral, and so tight so far in this one. And, of course, should a points deduction arrive at the start of next week, then there will be uh, clarity in the extent that they know then what could happen, uh, whether they, of course, everything's subject to appeal. Such a, a messy end in that respect for the, uh, for the Premier League. But... Um, no other goals elsewhere to uh, to tell you about as the ball downward header from uh, from Ashdev stabbed in field by Young. Here is uh, McNeil, Mikolenko on the uh, the overlap. McNeil though will shoot and it was into a body of legs on the edge of the area. And then Berger passes the ball out towards that far side. Yeah. Andre Gomez question marks around. Can he do the work in the midfield? He's just proven that he can. Here is Foster. Goes on the outside. Asignon is also there. Foster wins the challenge, gets the shot away. Head is going to come out to Charlie Taylor, who shoots, blocked by Coleman. Comes out. Cullen plays it. Berger, forward ball. Burnley are attacking. Cross towards the far post and headed behind. And it's a corner kick to Burnley. It's fantastic from Burnley. Just on the counter-attack, they work the ball up the pitch. And they're really patient in the final third. The ball recirculates, they, they move it around the edge of the box and they've just looked for that dink ball to the back post and Mikolenko has had to deal with it, but there was no player behind him coming in at the back post. He could have let it go, but now Burnley have got a corner. So Burnley playing from right to left as we look. Still nil-nil here at Goodison Park. Have a corner kick over on that far side. It was a fearsome drive from Charlie Taylor who scored his first goal for Burnley on his 198th appearance as the cross comes in, easily headed out by Calvert-Lewin, climbing high at the near post. And the aforementioned Taylor tidies up and back towards Murich. Murich forward ball. That was 
given away rather sloppy in the uh, in the midfield by Lyle Foster. Young can now run forward. Frost strikes the back of O'Shea, rides up in the air. Here is McNeil. Had his arm pulled back a little bit there, McNeil. Young floats over the cross. Too much on that, and it will curl out of play and out for a goal kick. Vincent Company applauds. It remains nil-nil. Let's get another update from the Super League with Richard Stead. Yeah, Jack Murch, he's just scored a third for Huddersfield, Ian, 16-4 with a kick to come, two tries from Adam Swift so far against his former club, the visitors on top. Not many goals around at this part of the uh, the afternoon, what are we, 22 minutes in, and uh, look down the uh, the old vidi printer, Coventry 1, Leeds 0, Morecambe 0, Doncaster 1, Portsmouth 1, Shrewsbury 0, I think that's about, that's about it. Goalless at Aston Villa, Burnford, Fulham, Newcastle, Luton, Bournemouth, Wolves, West Ham. As Taylor waits to take the throw for Burnley on this near side. Not much movement for, uh, for Charlie Taylor. That wind isn't easing, is it? Acrobatically, Taylor keeps the ball in play, loops up in the air, Gomez... Now towards Decore, short forward ball, McNeil comes into a central area, Young will feed it on this near side the right, Calvert-Lewin is judged offside, free kick to Burnley, nil-nil, and it is nil-nil. That's the second time Everton have been caught offside where they just didn't need to be. The ball down the line shaped into the space by Ashley Young, and I think the pass is for Decore, but Calvert-Lewin was offside and he ran onto the end of it. Any better for you at Molyneux, Maz? Well, there's been another couple of chances for Wolves, Ian, Zarabia and Tommy Doyle. Some really good, quick counter-attacking from Wolves at the moment. West Ham still really don't look in this game, but it is still 0-0 midway through this first half. Well, we're midway through the first half. We've just had a Branthwaite shot that was uh, well off target, and that's been about it. There was a, a Burnley uh, attack as Odebert picks the ball up centrally. His ball is stopped by the legs of Branthwaite. Passing the ball towards Decore. Young is getting forward on this near side. Instead, he looks for the run of Gomez. And Estev comes across, deals with it, snuffs it out, out for a throw far side, nil-nil. Yeah, there has to be a time when, you know, some of the pretty football that Burnley play, and they've done this all season, the pragmatism attached to a, a game of this magnitude, they are starting to give Everton little loose passes. They're being caught in possession where they don't need to be playing as so intricately. And I just wonder whether this is exactly what Everton want and they're just going to capitalise... As Fafana picks up the ball on the right-hand side, Nova runs it, and James Garner running back takes it to Alfie's toes and passes the ball inside. Charlton Athletic going ever so well under Nathan Jones, unbeaten in 10, a leading at the Valley. Charlton 1, Barnsley 0 is the latest score in, uh, in League One. Cross swung over from Mikolenko. Comes out towards Young. Ashley Young, edge of the area, passes it forward towards Decore, can't keep the ball in play, and the attack peters out, and it remains 0-0. So to Henry Moran back at Craven Cottage. Fulham nil, Newcastle nil. Hard to overstate quite how good Fulham have been and how poor Newcastle have been. Nine shots on goal, six corners. That's for Fulham. Newcastle zero in every single sense. They've been really poor. Fulham nil, Newcastle nil. BBC Radio 5 Live. 25 minutes played here at Goodison Park. Ball hit long out of defence for, uh, for Foster. Dealt with by Mikolenko. Branthwaite then will swing it out to this near side. Taylor heads it forward. Bryn Larson plays the ball infield. Cullen looking for the run now of, uh, of Oda Bear, who looks to go on the outside of uh, James Garner, then comes on the inside, passes the ball along the ground. Bryn Larson will float a diagonal ball out towards that far side. Hit by Foster, comes back towards Foster. Mikolenko at the second attempt clears the ball. Burnley, they'll keep it in play right hand side. Here is Foster once again. Foster to Asignon. Asignon waits. Crosses, blocks, edge of the area, headed away by Decore, headed back by Taylor. Vincent Company is bouncing around in that technical area, thinking there should have been a free kick for the away side on that occasion, as Michael Oliver on this time will give the free kick for Everton inside the centre circle. Tramier lead Walsall by a goal to nil, incidentally, at League Two, and there's been a goal at Stoke in the Championship lead Blakeman. It's gone to West Brom, Stoke nil, West Brom won, Mikey Johnston's got it, played through, very, very questionable offside, flag stayed down, nice finish, Stoke nil, West Brom won. And I mentioned earlier about a possibility of Carlisle getting relegated. Carlisle have, uh, have got to win for a stay of execution, uh, especially with Burton losing at home to Oxford United. Burton nil, Oxford United 1, and Mansfield nil, Crawley 2 is the latest score. So Crawley's excellent form 
uh, continuing at Field Mill and Mansfield just stumbling somewhat. Only one win in their last four. Taylor clears for Burnley. Yet to be a, have a goal in any of the three o'clocks in the Premier League on BBC Radio 5 Live. And Doncaster Rovers have got a second at Morecambe. Morecambe nil, Doncaster Rovers two. We'll go back into the Championship. Queen's Park Rangers, John Akers. QPR nil, Sheffield Wednesday nil, but we've just had one of the misses of the season. Probably the worst I've ever seen live. Joss Windass is only a yard out. He looks certain to score. It came off his thighs and went wide. You'll be seeing it on your reels all week. QPR nil, Sheffield Wednesday nil. 27 minutes played here at Goodison Park. O'Shea, a stationary O'Shea. Cullen in between the two centre-backs, passes the ball wide. O'Shea now feeds it forward to the feet of Asignon. Ten yards inside the Everton half on that right-hand side. Helped forward by Foster. Asignon's continued that run. Down towards the corner flag he goes. Good footwork by Asignon away from Mikulenko. Delivers the cross towards the near post. Pickford was there. And I think it was Tarkovsky as well. And between them, they managed to get the ball away, but... They're just seeing a few encouraging moments of Burnley. They've played some brilliant football. It was Asignon, the overlapping fullback, getting outside of Lyle Foster on that right hand side for Burnley. He fizzed the ball across. And I haven't seen a replay yet, but I think that was absolutely superb from James Tarkovsky just to clear the ball away. Just watching it now, the bit of skill from Asignon was delightful past McNeil. And it was Oz Tarkovsky yet. He just intercepted it. 28 minutes played, still goalless at Goodison Park to Villa Park. Pat Murphy. It's nil-nil here, it's all very well Villa playing pretty patterns, but they're doing nothing with their passing, particularly the final ball. And they nearly scored at the other end, Brentford. Carlos, great tackle in front of the whole end to deny Wieser. Villa nil, Brentford nil. Everton haven't won in their last five home games in the Premier League. The last time they went six without a win was 2009. As a misplaced pass goes out for, uh, for a throw. And Burnley look comfortable at the moment. They do, they've really found their groove but I do think they still look vulnerable. Brun Larson takes the ball off his chest from that ball, lays it off towards Foster. Branthwaite slid in, vital interception on the edge of the area. Just before he could shape to shoot, Burnley, they'll win the ball back. Sean Dyche complains down below to the fourth official. Well, this is where the cauldron of Goodison Park starts to, to creep in, that misplaced pass about a minute ago. And then just the, the decisions not going their way, you can feel the tension across the fans starting to build. Here is Odebert. Odebert on the left. Coleman, the right back for Everton, will pass the ball back to his goalkeeper, Jordan Pickford, onto that trusty left foot of his, clears it, and out of play it goes for a, for a throw. Now remember, Ipswich Town, the leaders in the championship, lost at Norwich City. We know that Leeds United are behind at Coventry. So for third place, Leicester, an opportunity, and there's been a goal, Aaron Paul. Oh, finally they're ahead, Ian. Leicester won, Birmingham nil. Birmingham just taking risks at the back. Leicester knocking it around the Birmingham six-yard box. And there was Keenan Dewsbury, who said, thank you very much. I'll stick it in the back of the net. And that's what he did, dropping to the floor in relief. Leicester won, Birmingham nil. There's already been a goal involving the leaders of League One, and there's been a second at Fratton Park, Flo Pollock. And it's level, Portsmouth 1, Shrewsbury 1, against the run of play, good run down the right, Jordan Shipley applying the finish, Portsmouth 1, Shrewsbury 1. Second place, Derby not in action until Wednesday when they take on uh, Wickham. Uh, Bolton, who are third, are away at Bristol Rovers this afternoon. Estev clears for Burnley, still it remains goalless at, uh, at Goodison. As this is Foster carrying the ball forward, edge of the area, Foster onto his right foot, tried to thread it through to Fafana. Mikolenko sliding clear and strikes his own player, benefits Fafana as it comes back to him, and then Tarkovsky will run back and eventually clear for, uh, for Everton. It's a real mess at the back from Everton. Firstly, Branthwaite, I mean, never let the ball bounce, and Foster just run off the, off the line from the right-hand side. The ball's bouncing, he's just won the header, and then Odebert's got through. And Everton really lucky not to concede that. That sense of nervousness isn't uh, getting better. There is a real anxiety around uh, Goodison Park. You can uh, feel the sense of peril that they know that their club are in. Four points clear of, uh, of Luton Town. There's just a, a stoppage in play here, which can only imagine that... Is there a... Oh, there's something wrong with the assistant referee. His communication system, so he's just getting patched up on his upper left arm at this stage. I was thinking it, there might have been a VAR check, but he's given the thumbs up to Michael Oliver as the uh, as the assistant and play can resume. 
but 31 minutes played and very little has happened in this game. But there is now a penalty at Molyneux. Mas Faruqi. Four walls. Pablo Sarabia is about to take it. Four walls. It definitely looked like a penalty from my position. Ray and Eight Nori off on the counter to attack. Brought down by Emerson. Tony Harrington saw it immediately. Pointed to the spot. But West Ham here, it's all fun and games. Kilwin's getting involved because they're just trying to reposition it on the penalty spot. So maybe come back to me in a second. OK, let us know where Mas, as meanwhile, Blackpool 1, Cambridge 0, Barnsley have equalised at the Valley, Charlton 1, Barnsley 1 is a, another latest score in League 1, and Burnley have been awarded a free kick just outside the left corner of the penalty area. But we'll go back to Mas. Uh, Pablo Zarabia has scored that penalty, he flashed it just inside the right-hand corner, Fabianski couldn't get there, Wolves have been the better side here, and they deserve this lead, Wolves 1, West Ham 0. Not great for West Ham going into that Europa League quarter-final on Thursday against Bayer Leverkusen, out of form in the Premier League. Four wins without in the uh, in the Premier League before today and behind at Molyneux. Here, though, for uh, for Burnley, Brun Larsen, left corner of the penalty area to take this free kick. It remains nil-nil, 12 minutes to go to half-time. Pickford, he's got three in the wall. Every other Everton player... He's back in and around that penalty area. It's Brun Larson with a dipping effort, right footed, just over the top. Goal kick. Not far off at all from Brun Larson. He's just looked to whip the ball across the face of the goal. And it's not too far over the bar at all, but really positive sign again from Burnley. At the top of League Two, third place Wrexham are drawing at Colchester. Second place Mansfield are 2 0 down at home to Crawley. And for the leaders, Stockport, Ellen Ellard. They've doubled their lead. Sarsovic with a free kick in his own half. Taken quickly, he spots Carl Noel making a run towards the area down the right-hand side. He cuts it back for Paddy Madden, who is there and waiting and slots away his second of the game. Sutton nil, Stockport two. Hull City without a win in six, the leading at Cardiff in the championship. Cardiff nil, Hull City one. 11 minutes to go to half-time. And uh, another free kick for, uh, for Burnley. What are we, just under 30 yards out from goal? Near side the left, about 10 yards in from the touchline. Charlie Taylor just wandered over to have a word with Brun Larson. Cullen is there as well. And Everton have got a line of royal blue shirts on the edge of their penalty area. Looks like Brun Larson or Cullen is going to whip this in. Not shooting range at all. Brun Larson went close moments ago, but he was a lot closer there to the penalty area than he is here. In fact, he leaves it for Cullen, and Cullen goes deep into that crowded area, headed out, Taylor tries to head it forward, clash of heads, there'll be a stoppage in play. Let's get an update from Coventry in the uh, in the Championship, Charlie Slater. 31 minutes gone, Coventry won, Leeds nil, but Leeds should be level, Patrick Bamford's missed a sitter, Firpo put it on a plate for him, five yards out, goal at his mercy, put it wide, still 1-0 to Coventry. As it stands, Leicester City, who are leading Birmingham by a goal to nil, are currently top of the championship. We mentioned about Carlisle United could potentially go down there at Northampton, and there's been a goal, Mark Webber. Yeah, they need to win this game, but it's Northampton 1, Carlisle nil at the moment. Kieran Bowie picking up off the rebound from a Mitch Pinnock corner, Northampton Town 1, Carlisle United nil. Bottom of the table, Carlisle then facing relegation as there's a, a stoppage in play, and uh, Charlie Taylor is getting patched up, and there's also I'll see who the Everton player is, actually, who's getting treatment. McNeil. McNeil, is it? Hasn't been a great game, this, has it, so far, is he? No, it's just like Burnley by far been the better team. You know, they've looked to play. Josh Cullen's been fantastic in the middle of the park. I did say before the game that, as cliche as it sounds, it could be a game won and lost in the midfield. Burnley have had some wonderful little passing patterns and that little injury there, I think it was a head collision between... Dwight McNeil and Taylor of Burnley just off the second phase of that free kick that was whipped in by Cullen. Grimsby 1, Newport 0, still play yet to resume. Back to Hull, Richard Stead. Three tries since you were last with us, Ian. Sutcliffe for the home side, and in reply, Huddersfield have struck through Eastern Masters and a hat-trick try for Adam Swift. Six minutes to the interval, Hull FC 10, Huddersfield 28. Late Norian 1, Cheltenham 0 is the latest score in League 1. 
Only Wolves in the Premier League of the three o'clock games has seen a goal. Wolves leading West Ham by a goal to nil. Nine minutes to go to half-time. Play about to resume. Kenilworth Road now, Chris Coles. Luton nil, Bournemouth nil. Bournemouth continue to create the better chances. The latest coming from a corner that hit Luton's Deki Hashioka and very nearly went in until Thomas Kaminsky made a smart save to keep it at Luton nil, Bournemouth nil. Coleman's cross from the right. Uh, Brun Larson helping out defensively with the, uh, the clearance for Burnley. Tarkovsky will bring it under control on the halfway line. Eight minutes to go, Coleman, Everton get a throw near side. Barrow nil, Swindon one, and another goal at Sutton for Ellen Ellard. Yeah, Sutton have won back, it's a penalty. Josh Coley brought down in the area. Charlie Lake and the Burton Loney finally put the ball on the spot and sent it high and fast past Ben Hinchcliffe. Sutton one, Stockport two. St Mirren nil, Hearts one is the latest score from Paisley in the Scottish Premiership. Esther will let this bouncing ball go back. This scoreline suits Burnley. Yeah, I've been watching Vincent Company on the touchline and there's been many a time he's had his hands above his head applauding his team's defensive actions. In possession, he knows exactly what to expect, but defensively, Everton really can suffocate you at times. And so far, Burnley have handled it well. Everton are right still in it, though. Well, they will, he will be pleased defensively, bearing in mind that they've shipped two or more goals in each of their last six away games. It's the uh, the most since a run of 11 in 0-9-10. No other goals elsewhere. But I would imagine the summing up for you for this game when we hand back to Mark Chapman at half-time will be minimal. It won't take very, very long as Fafana runs forward, nil-nil. Diagonal ball feeds it out towards that right-hand side. Foster's first-time cross. Pickford has to retreat. Brun Larson couldn't control that ball because of the wind in the penalty area. Passes it ball to, to Cullen, left corner of the area. Back to Brun Larson. Char Charlie Taylor on the overlap, not required. Cullen, though, will pass the ball forward to Taylor. First time cross, charged down by Young, diverted behind for a corner kick to Burnley. Yeah, the Burnley have really targeted the right hand side, Everton's left back area, Mikelenko. Every opportunity they've got, they've looked to switch the play and just put the ball above Mikelenko and kind of force the error. And then what they've done is they've circulated the ball really well through Josh Cullen, and they've worked themselves another corner. Everton, who've only scored 15 goals at home in the Premier League, the joint fewest for Sheffield United. Well, they look like adding to that tally as Fafana comes forward with a glancing header. Corner kick from the left, near side of the six-yard area, straight at, uh, at Pickford. Pickford's early release to McNeil, controls the ball with the outside of his left boot on the halfway line, passes the ball back to, uh, to Gomez. Gomez leaves it to, uh, to Branthwaite. Not created hardly anything, have they, the home team? There's been a goal at Villa Park, Pat Murphy. To Aston Villa, a McGinn cross. Watkins got the first header. Fine instinctive save by Flecken. Following up, Bailey put it in. Remains to be seen who's going to claim that goal, but after an hiatus, where it looked like the referee was going to be swayed by Brent Brentford protestations, it is definitely Villa 1, Brentford 0. And Dundee are leading Motherwell by a goal to nil in the Scottish Premiership. Five minutes to go at a half-time. Taylor, little flat-footed. Coleman was alert with the interception. Forward ball, Coleman will give chase. Took a deflection on its way through and will allow Odebear to just get there before Coleman. But Coleman battles for the ball well. Keeps the ball in play down by the corner flag on this right-hand side. Tries to win a corner off the legs of, uh, of Odebear. But in the end, the assistant referee says it will be a goal kick. Let's get another update from Craven Cottage. Henry Moran. Fulham nil, Newcastle nil. Newcastle starting to come into this game. Anthony Gordon with most of their good work. Two low shots drifting just wide from him, but another injury concern. Willock off, and uh, more worries for Eddie Howe on that front. Fulham nil, Newcastle nil. Aston Villa 1, Brentford nil. Goalless at Craven Cottage. Also nil nil, Luton Bournemouth. Wolves still lead West Ham by a goal to nil. A Saravia penalty just past the half hour. And remember earlier, Manchester City beat Crystal Palace by four goals to two. We'll have commentary from the Amex at 5.30 of Brighton and Hove Albion against Arsenal and commentary tomorrow after the old firm of Rangers Celtics for earlier start for Five Live Sport. 11.30 tomorrow, Steve Crossman on the air. Manchester United Liverpool to follow at 3.30. Everton get a free kick. Don't look like scoring an open play. Let's see what they can do in a from this set piece. Yeah, and they've created this siege mentality and feel around the stadium of Everton. They've played the ball long, and it's Dom Calvert-Lewin who 
has barely touched the ball in the first half. He's just won the header. He's been caught late. And Andre Gomez looks like he's going to swing this ball in against the wind. Could be a chance for Everton. Gomez to take it then. Right footed. Clips it in. Headed away by Fafana. Dropping ball. Branthwaite hooked back by Decore. Cleared by Estev. Touched by James Garner then to Gomez. On the half volley, lifts it back in once again. And Muric ducks underneath it. And it runs out of play for a goal kick. And it remains nil-nil. Forest Green nil. MK Dons 1 is the latest score in League 2. And in League 1, Exeter are leading Stevenage by a goal to nil. But nil-nil. As there's a penalty at Portsmouth now at Fratton Park, Flo Pollock. Yes, there is. It's for Portsmouth. Colby Bishop has the ball on the spot to put Portsmouth up. Two goals to one. The referee's just getting the goalkeeper to make sure he's on his line. Colby Bishop to put Portsmouth in front. In front of a voice for us, Fratton Park. Colby Bishop from the spot, slides it in the bottom corner. Portsmouth 2, Shrewsbury 1. Thank you, Flo. Portsmouth then back in front. Two minutes to go to half-time. No sign of the wind abating here at, uh, at Goodison. Fafana tussling for the ball with Gomez. Runs clear, very, very scrappy. James Garner hits it long. Calvert-Lewin will give chase. Murich quickly out of his goal. Puts it out of play for a throw. Yeah, good start position from the Burnley goalkeeper. Ball just fizzed into the channel. Dominic Calvert-Lewin looked like he was going to win, win the race. And Murich just came and cleared it. Really alert from the Burnley goalkeeper. Coleman, there really has been nothing for uh, Everton to excite their supporters. Hardly a, an empty seat inside Goodison Park this afternoon. Under the clear blue skies and the sunshine. There's Tarkovsky's forward ball. Coleman inside to Decore, right side of the area. First cross was blocked, turns, plays it out towards Young. Young to Garner. Garner sends over the cross now from the right touch line. Headed out by Asignon. Foster will collect that. Asignon's gone bursting ahead of him. Inside, though, to Cullen. Cullen's forward ball, read easily by Tarkovsky to step forward. Finds Decore. Now out towards Mikolenko. Mikolenko with the cross. And it comes to Young, down into the ground. Half blocked, headed away by uh, Taylor. James Garner does well to win it back for Everton on this near side. Coleman. Challenged by Fafana. No foul. And instead it will be a goal kick. And we have 60 seconds remaining. Charlton, incidentally, are back in front. Charlton 2, Barnsley 1 is the latest score in League 1. 60 seconds to go to the half-time. Yeah, he's looking for that. Seamus Coleman. Just a loose pass that's been dropped back. But Everton, that are the moments where they need to capitalise. The ball in for Mikolenko. They've got numbers up in the box. And they just fail to convert or get a shot on target. I think they've had a shot on target, have they, at all yet, so far? Everton, here is Odebear, central area taken out by Gomez, that'll be a yellow card. That is where Everton are the most vulnerable, with Garner and Andre Gomez in that midfield. They're both offensive-minded players, it was excellent. The man on the floor, I think it's... Who's the player on the floor? Odebear. Odebear, excellent first touch on the half-turn, spins past Gomez. Gomez got a yellow card, didn't he? He did. Yeah, he's been booked by Michael Oliver. Burnley have had the greater possession, 58%. They've only had one shot on target. Everton yet to muster a shot on target. It has been grim at Goodison. As we have two minutes remaining. Two minutes have added on time. Ball played forward from the free kick by Cullen. Over hit. I, mean, I, would, I can imagine that the... Uh, you tell me as a former midfielder that the wind can't be helping, but as a spectacle, there's hardly been one. No, this, it hasn't. I mean, looking at the football that's being played, and Burnley have by far played the better football, but that doesn't always win you football matches. You can't, I can't, I can't help but think in the second half, Everton will just continue doing this, staying in the game and then nick it at the end off a set piece or something like that, because that is how the game has been. But the amount of ball playing midfielders out there on the pitch, you can just see that goal kick from Jordan Pickford and the wind. The ball just stopped in the middle of the air. Yeah. Just dropped. A shortage of goals and a shortage of quality. Nil-nil as Pickford clears downfield. So into two minutes of added on time. It's a, a long ball forward, cleared away by O'Shea. Branthwaite heads it forward to, uh, to Gomez. 
Referee will give a free kick for uh, a foul on... Uh, free kick to Everton for a foul burger on Gomez to the, uh, to the home side. Middlesbrough are leading Swansea by a goal to nil. Lake Norian two, Cheltenham nil are other latest scores. And Bradford City are leading Gillingham by a goal to nil at Valley Parade. Barrow nil, Swindon two. I think that's the most excitement we've had with a flurry of scores elsewhere in this first half so far. Back with uh, Esther. Leicester were leading Birmingham by a goal to nil. The last we heard, there's been another goal, Aaron Paul. Oh, it's a howler from Mads Hermansen here. Leicester won. Oh, oh, that's it. And here we've had a goal, and it is a freak goal because Muric, with no danger whatsoever, has gone to clear his lines, didn't look comfortable with the ball at his feet, and Calvert Lewin, with an outstretched boot, gets the block challenge in, it balloons over the head of Muric, and out of absolutely nothing, Everton receive a gift to take the lead by a goal to nil. Well, 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 Dominic Calvert-Lewin, he's not scored in 23 games. He scored midweek and he will not get an easier goal. He just presses Murich and it just deflects, the ball just deflects over the top of Murich and just bounces into the back of the net. Doesn't get much better than that, but Murich, he's just delayed, delayed, delayed. And it just gives Dominic Calvert-Lewin the time to press him. And they finally were going to be undone it was to be undone by themselves and that's exactly what's happened well that's incredible bearing in mind that Aaron Paul was just telling us about a howler that he's just witnessed and then we've seen one equally from uh, from Urich here Notts County one Harrogate nil and back to Aaron for news of that Birmingham equaliser Ian it's amazing we've just seen basically the same goal you've seen at your game Leicester one Birmingham one Jay Stansfield just closing down the Leicester goalkeeper Mads Hermanson and forcing him into the mistake with the ball bobbling over the line to the embarrassment of the Danish goalkeeper Leicester one Birmingham one into two minutes of added on time well the half-time whistle has sounded that was almost the last kick of the game such a fortuitous goal is it Christensen from a very poor first half yeah, it's a fortuitous goal, but that's Everton. That is the way they do it. That's the way they stay in the game. They keep it tight. It's been a pretty dismal display from them. Burnley have by far been the better footballing team, but Murick, the, the Burnley goalkeeper, just hesitant playing out from the back, which they've been so good at in that first half, Burnley. And then Dominic Calvert-Lewin just pounces. He just gets his foot in front of the ball as Murick looks to clear it, and the ball has just bounced into an empty net and advantage Everton. A slice of good fortune for Everton, who lead Burnley 1-0 at half-time. Uh, Tony Watts has just scored for Dundee United, and the Scottish Championship leaders are ahead at Queen's Park by a goal to nil. Half-time at Villa Park, Pat Murphy. 1-0 Villa, Ollie Watkins, 17th league goal of the season from McGinn's cross. Uh, the keeper flecked, uh, he scooped it back over the line, Bailey followed up, but it's been claimed by Watkins justifiably. It's been a tepid, tedious game, over-elaboration from Villa, Final pass not good enough, but Carlos for Villa, crucial tackle to deny Wieser when he looked like he would have put Brentford ahead. Brentford have now got to chase this game. It's Villa 1, Brentford 0. Uh, Wraith are in a promotion battle with Dundee United to get out of the Scottish Championship, and as Dundee United scored in their game, Wraith scored in theirs, and they lead air by a goal to nil. Walsall have equalised in uh, League 2 in England. Uh, it's Tranmere 1. A Walsall one. We will go to uh, Sutton, where Stockport have uh, retained or regained their two-goal lead. Ellen Ellard. Yeah, they have indeed. It's been coming for the, the league leaders. It fell to Paddy Madden once again. He's been the big difference here. Just inside the area, curled it perfectly past Arnold for his ha first half hat-trick. It's Sutton 1, Stockport 3. Uh, let's go to Molyneux. Half-time whistle has gone there, Masferuki. It is Wolves 1, West Ham 0 at the break. West Ham have been, in truth, rather flat. Their best opportunity fell for Socek in the Wolves area after Bowen fed the ball to him. He won it on the dead ball line, but Socek couldn't get the shot away. Wolves do deserve their lead. Eight Nori has been excellent. He won the penalty. It was a counter-attack at pace forward as he made the run into the West Ham penalty area. He was brought down by Emerson and Pablo 
Pablo Zarabia slotted the spot kick away. Before that, there was a really good chance for Tommy Doyle as well, but he couldn't keep his strike on target. It is 1-0 at half-time uh, here at Molyneux. Sorry, Mars, thank you. Goalless at Kenilworth Road, although Bournemouth will wonder how, Chris. Yeah, quite. Shouldn't be goalless. Bournemouth have had excellent chances. They've hit the frame of the goal twice. Luton haven't offered a great deal. Fairly even between both boxes, but Bournemouth come to life in front of goal. Tavernier hit the angle of post and bar from a free kick. Clivert's right foot shot brushed the outside of the post, and Thomas Kaminsky in the Luton goal needed to be alert to prevent an own goal from a corner. Luton's half chances from range and nowhere near. Ross Barkley and Tahith Chong shooting way over the top. Luton nil, Bournemouth nil. <laughs> and if you, you can obviously we see why you can see on my monitor. They've put the sprinklers on. Oh, don't. But but none of that water must be here in the turf because it's of not. the wind. It's, it's hitting us. <laughs> It's hitting us. The wind is so strong. They put it on before the match and we oh. were getting soaked. Right. Anyway. Goalless there. Goalless at Craven Cottage as well. Henry Moran. Yep. Fulham nil. Newcastle nil. Despite all of Fulham's early dominance, they haven't made it count. William, Polinia, Munoz all having good opportunities. Largely, it has to be said, created by Newcastle ineptitude. It was a frantic first half hour, but the visitors have rather grown into it uh, in the last 15 minutes or so. The returning Anthony Gordon twice going close. As we said earlier, Newcastle are yet to have a goal as draw this season at the break full of nil Newcastle nil leaders Ipswich beaten in the derby at Norwich at lunchtime so Leeds could go top if they win at Coventry but Charlie Slater well they've got some work to do Coventry won Leeds nil Ellis Sims can't stop scoring his 14th goal in 11 games a header in the ninth minute from a corner Leeds should have drawn level 20 minutes later but Bamford missed from all of five yards out and as it stands they're on their way to a first defeat of 2024 while Coventry will close the gap on the playoffs to four points Coventry won Leeds nil so Ipswich lost Leeds losing can Leicester take advantage Aaron Paul mm, Leicester won Birmingham won two defensive lapses two goals marking what has been a pretty tepid first half the Foxes have created little but had loads of possession. Pretty much the same story as usual, isn't it? They took the lead through Keenan and Dewsbury Hall, who I don't think could be bothered to carry on the mini rondos, just striking past John Ruddy out of frustration and finding uh, him finding the back of the net. Birmingham had chances of their own. Miyoshi and uh, Bielik producing standard saves from Hermanson, but then the Danish goalkeeper was left embarrassed. Playing out from the back, he was closed down by Jay Stansfield with the ball deflecting into the net for his 12th goal of the season. Not clinical enough from the home side. Leicester won, Birmingham won. Uh, Pre-match ahead of Blackburn Southampton, we talked about Smodic and Armstrong. 49 goals between them in all competitions this season. So, Will Perry? Yeah, at the break, Blackburn nil, Southampton nil. Best chance for the visitors. Aribo's looping header hit the bar, struck the goalkeeper's back before being cleared. Adam Armstrong did flash a shot across the face of the Blackburn goal and the Championship's top scorer, Smodic, was close to lobbing Pazunu, but scraped the top of the net. Blackburn nil, Southampton so none of the top four winning so far today. The team in fifth are Lee Blakeman. Stoke nil, West Brom one. Stoke with all the chances. West Brom with the only goal, though. Mikey Johnston played through, looked offside, flag stayed down. Johnston finished well past Iverson. Stoke have gone close through Manhoof and Haksabanovic twice. Stephen should have scored as well. Half-time, though, Stoke nil, West Brom one. Focusing uh, towards the bottom of the table now, QPR, Sheffield Wednesday, John Akers. QPR nil, Sheffield Wednesday nil. QPR have been on top, but in five years, time you'll be doom scrolling on your phone and you will come across the miss in the first half from Sheffield Wednesday's Josh Windass he was a yard out beautiful cross from the right hand side and it's one of those where you just think how's it not gone in it just has to hit him surely on the goal line with Begovic nowhere and it goes in it came off his thighs somehow and went across the goal line and wide it is extraordinary it's nil nil at half time you strike me as a doom scroller I am a very much a doom <laughs> scroller, and I swear our grandkids will be scrolling and they'll see that. Uh, right, let's uh, go to Huddersfield, Millwall, Katie Smith. Yeah, Huddersfield nil, Millwall nil. The home side, though, offering the biggest threat. Josh Caroma will be kicking himself. Maybe he'll be doom scrolling later as well for the chances he's missed. Dragged one shot wide, one curled over the crossbar, and then a follow up put away, taken from his feet with a brilliant sliding stop from Ryan Leonard. And they won't like news that Birmingham equaliser, other, other, uh, uh, as well, Huddersfield steal two points from safety as it stands 0-0. Uh, Inverness, Caledonia and Thistle have taken the lead against our Broth in the Scottish Championship. They lead by a goal to nil. The, the implication that has for our Broth is that they will finish no higher than ninth in the Scottish Championship, so they will face a relegation playoff at best. Elsewhere in the English Championship, Cardiff nil, hold two at the break. Fabio Carvalho on loan from Liverpool has got both of those uh, goals for Liam Rossini's side. Middlesbrough leads Swansea 
uh, by a goal to nil. That would extend their run to unbeaten in their last seven. Uh, Emmanuel Lath got that goal 11 for the season now for him. Uh, it is Sunderland nil, Bristol City nil and Watford nil. Preston nil. Let's go into League One and we're with the leaders this afternoon. Portsmouth at home to Shrewsbury. Flo Pollock. Portsmouth lead Shrewsbury by two goals to one. Pompey scoring with their first attack. An own goal, the Shrews captain, Che Dunkley, the offender. The Shrews level, level through Jordan Shipley, but Pompey lead at the break courtesy of Colby Bishop from the spot. Half-time, Portsmouth two, Shrewsbury one. At the other end of the table, as things stand, Carlisle are down this afternoon. Mark Webber. Indeed, because it's Northampton one, Carlisle nil. Playing with the wind first half, but an uphill battle faces them in the second half. With the best chances before Northampton scored, Georgie Kelly's glancing header pushed over the bar by keeper Lee Burge. They could have taken the lead then, but Northampton's Mitch Pinnock nicknamed the postman. He delivered. Kieran Bowie got on the end of his corner. Northampton won. Carlisle nil. Uh, Blackpool have their first goal in four league games and they lead Cambridge by a goal to nil. It's goalless between Bristol Rovers and Bolton. Burton nil. Uh, Oxford won. Mark Harris has got that. 16 for the season for him. Charlton 2, Barnsley won. Both of Charlton's goals coming from Alfie May. 27 for the season. Adam Phillips got Barnsley's goal from the penalty spot. Uh, Exeter, who are unbeaten in their last five, leads Stevenage by a goal to nil. It's Leighton Orient 2, Cheltenham 0, Reading 0, Lincoln 0 and Wigan 0. Port Vale nil. The League Two leaders are ahead at Sutton. Ellen Ellard. Yes, yeah, Sutton one, Stockport three. And as things stand, Sutton back into the drop zone after a good run of form prior to today. But it was a quick start from Stockport. Paddy Madden opening the scoring three minutes in. He then doubled their lead on the 30 minute mark. Noyle cutting it back for the captain to tap in. Almost immediately after that, though, Burton Loney Lakin scored from the spot. But just before the break, the league leaders reinstated their two goalie, Paddy Madden. Once again, a sublime curling strike to complete his first half hat trick. At half time, Sutton won, Stockport three. Mansfield are in second, just starting to stumble a little bit. They've only won one of their last four and they're behind at home this afternoon. Mansfield nil. Crawley 2. Third place, Wrexham are at Colchester. Paul Scott. Goal is here between Colchester and Wrexham. The home side edging it though in terms of chances. John Akinde heading over, Alistair Smith shooting over, while Cameron McGee and the top scorer with the only off effort on target, straight at goalkeeper Arthur Akwonkwo. As for Wrexham, well they've seen Jacob Mendy go off injured and Paul Mullen, their top scorer has shot wide twice. It's Colchester nil, Wrexham nil. Elsewhere, goal is between Accrington and Crew and AFC Wimbledon and Salford. Surprise at Barrow who've uh, only lost one in seven they trail Swindon 2-0 at the break. Paul Glatzel got the second of Swindon's goals. He's got five in his last six. Bradford lead Gillingham by a goal to nil. His Forest Green Rovers nil. MK Dons won. MK Dons in fourth. Max Dean got the goal. 16 for him this season. Grimsby lead Newport by a goal to nil. Danny Rose's 15th of the season there. Morecambe nil. Doncaster 2. Luke Molyneux got both of those goals. Knox County lead Harrogate by a goal to nil. Macaulay Langstaff from the penalty spot and he's got 26 this season. Now Tranmere one, Walsall one. In the National League earlier, finished Oldham one, Rochdale one. Half times, Borehamwood one, Wealdstone nil, Dorking nil, Altrincham nil, Ebbsfleet one, AFC File nil, Hartlepool one, Aldershot nil, Maidenhead one, Barnet nil, Woking one, Dagenham and Redbridge one, York City nil, Eastleigh nil. It's also the semi finals of the FA Trophy this afternoon. Bromley nil, Solihull Moors one, and Gateshead two, Macclesfield nil at the break. Into the Scottish Premiership, full commentary of Rangers Celtic tomorrow. On Five Live, it's a noon kickoff this afternoon. We're at Hibs against St Johnston, Ailey Barber. Where it is goalless and not a hugely exciting one. Hibs have had a lot more of the ball, but they've not been able to find that moment of magic. The fans thought they should have had a penalty when Mitov came to punch it clear and looked to catch Marcondes rather than the ball, but a brief VAR check and nothing given. And with Dundee winning, Hibs's top six hopes are hanging by a thread. St Johnson, meanwhile, they're looking to move away from the bottom. They've shown moments on the break, but both will be looking for a much bigger and better second half. It is at the break. Hibs nil, St Johnson nil. Just two goals in five. Five games in the Scottish Premiership this afternoon. They've come at Dens Park, where Dundee lead Motherwell by a goal to nil, and at St Mirren, where Hearts are a goal to the good. Uh, so as well as it being goalless between Hibs and St Johnston, it's also nil-nil between Kilmarnock and Ross County and Livingston and Aberdeen. Uh, in the Scottish Championship, Adrianians 2, Morton nil, Dunfermline nil, Partick Thistle 1, Inverness 1, Arbroath nil. Arbroath won't be able to finish higher than ninth this season if that scoreline stays the same. Queen's Park nil, Dundee United 1 and Wraith lead Air by a goal to nil. So the 
gap between those two at the top would stay four points, but Wraith have a game in hand on Dundee United in League One. Anna nil, Hamilton one. Uh, they've abandoned the game between Edinburgh City and Montrose, presumably because of the weather. Queen of the South nil, Kelty Hearts one, and Sterling nil, Alloa three the other half times. In League Two, Bonnie Rig Rose one, Peterhead nil, Clyde nil, Stramra nil, Elgin nil, Spartans one, Forfar nil, Dumbarton nil, Stenhouse Muir nil, East Fife nil. So Stenhouse Muir will be promoted today because they're getting a point and Peterhead are losing. Uh, in the Rugby Union Champions Cup, uh, earlier Bulls beat Leon 59-19. Half time and it's Exeter 7, Bath 12. You can listen to that on Sports Extra. It's also Stormers 13, La Rochelle nil. Let's go into Super League. We talked about Hull getting several wallopings this season and they're on the end of another. Richard. Yeah, just a try in the second minute of the second half. It will go to the video referee, but Hull have been awful, Mark. 40 points to 10, Huddersfield lead, including a first-half Adam Swift hat-trick. As I say, Bibby's just gone over in the corner. It's gone up to the video referee as a no-try, but 40-10 is the score. Huddersfield Giants very much in charge at Hull FC. In Snooker's Tour Championship in the semi-final, Mark Williams 8, Mark Allen nil it's the first to 10 in that semi-final two minutes past four back to goodison after the latest news listen on bbc sounds this is bbc radio five live Israel's military says it's recovered the body of a man taken hostage in Gaza. Ilad Katsir was among those taken during the Hamas attacks on the 7th of October. Israeli officials say they believe as many as 97 people could still be alive. At least seven people have been killed in Russian drone attacks on the Ukrainian city of Kharkiv. Officials say six died when residential areas were targeted overnight and one person was killed in a second strike this afternoon. And Greater Manchester Police says a human torso found wrapped in plastic at a nature reserve on Thursday is that of a man who was aged over 40. Detectives believe he'd been dead for a matter of days. DNA tests are being carried out to identify him. This is Five Live Sports with Mark Chapman on Five Live. Listen on BBC Sounds. A uh, couple of cricketing stories for you. Sam Northeast of Glamorgan, 335 not out when his side declared on 620 for three in the county championship against Middlesex. And in the IPL, Virat Kohli currently 72 of 51 balls for RCB, who were 125 without loss in the 14th against Rajasthan Royals. Back to Ian. Just underway, Everton leading by a goal to nil. That fortuitous goal from Calvert-Lewin on the stroke of half-time. Just closing down the Murich clearance. It's uh, de definitely a, a freak goal, element of really good fortune for a game which uh, lacked quality and very few chances in that, uh, that first half. But Everton in their predicament will take that. And incidentally, since the start of last season, all nine of Everton's home wins in the Premier League have been to nil. So um, they'll be looking to try and continue that trend here at, uh, at Goodison as they play in their royal blue shirts and white shorts from right to left as they attack the Gladys Street end. And there's been an early goal in the second half at Villa Park. Pat Murphy. It's Villa's second goal and the magnificent goal by Morgan Rogers. their January signing, rolled his hips, shrugged off the defender composed finish with his left foot no wonder he did the cartwheel he'd be delighted with that as are the Villa fans Villa 2 Brentford nil. thank you Pat Everton have got this free kick right hand side just in from the uh, the touchline Gomez to take it no alterations to tell you about I'll run through the two teams for you in a moment Gomez then on that right it's a good ball in it's headed out by by Foster so Pickford is in goal back four of Coleman Tarkovsky Branthwaite and Mikolenko as Mikolenko goes on the outside and delivers a cross and then it's Brun Larson who controls it in the penalty area young Garner McNeil Decore Gomez and Calvert-Lewin make up that Everton starting lineup for Burnley Murich who was at fault for the goal back four of Asignon Esther O'Shea and Taylor Brun Larson Cullen Berger Odebear Foster and Fafana and Burnley in their yellow shirts and black shorts are playing from left to right, attacking the park end of the ground. But a, a much more positive start for the second half, Everton. Yeah, they've come out of the traps flying, Everton. They're really pushing down that right-hand side of Burnley, just trying to pin them back, let them know who's boss, because Burnley in the first half played by far the better football. But as you say, don't know, fortuitous, but 
That's football with that Everton goal, puts them in the lead. They've now got something to hold on to. And also bearing in mind that uh, for Burnley, when they've conceded first, they're yet to win this season. On the, uh, the previous 18 times it's happened in this Premier League season, they've drawn two and lost 16 when they've conceded the first goal in games in the, uh, in the Premier League. As uh, O'Shea passes the ball back to, uh, to Muric. Muric then to Estev. Cullen drops in between the two central defenders once more. Asignon and Taylor, the full-backs right and left side, respectively, have pushed quite high. Estev to, uh, to Cullen. No pressure on Cullen at this stage, and they're quite happy for him to have the ball as uh, Odebert in that central area gives it back, and then they all of a sudden start to press, and Burnley are forced to go back. Yeah, spot on, Dunno. They're just letting Burnley get back into that sense of security that they were in in the first half, dictating the ball keeping the ball ticking over through Cullen and they're just waiting to pounce Everton and that is exactly how the goal came. Odebert runs away from him and allows Branthwaite to uh, to get the challenge in as he goes to ground and it goes out of play into the sunshine on that uh, that far side. Um, Everton incidentally at half time showed a, the, a video of their, the club marking their respects to their Neighbours Liverpool ahead of the 35th anniversary of the uh, the Hillsborough disaster with a, a floral tribute that took place uh, ahead of the game and uh, their thoughts are with the family and friends of the 97 lives that were lost on that fateful day. I think they were actually in the Gladys Street end had it not been so windy there was going to be a huge banner that would have been unfurled as well they've always been class in that respect. Of, uh, of Everton Football Club, as you would know as a, as a former player, is it? Absolutely, you know, huge amount of respect across the city for each other, and football isn't the most important thing. The the, uh, the wind, I think, uh, took paid to that idea because the banner was meant to be that big, um, so they uh, they had to shelve those uh, those plans. Everton still lead by a goal to nil five minutes into the second half. Hibbs nil, St Johnston 1 is the latest score in the Scottish Premiership. We'll get news of that goal from Easter Road with Ailey Barber when we can. Five live, BBC Sounds and the World Service. 50 minutes played. Such an important game down at the bottom of the table. Everton already dealt with a, a six-point deduction. Could be facing further points to be taken off them at the start of next week. The Premier League said 8th of April was the, the latest date that it would be... Uh, announced so in that respect three points here today imperative as Gomez to Mikulenko hits it downfield headed on by Calvert-Lewin who climbed high O'Shea with a back pass to Murich ball bobbled a little bit on the, on the ground Berger then will run it out of play out towards that far side out to, uh, to safety and tied it up in fact there was a an earlier foul. He tried to play the advantage, Michael Oliver, the referee, and then there wasn't one, and he's brought it back. Yeah, Burnley living dangerously, and you can feel the Everton fans rising again. They're just urging the team on to pounce on that back pass, to just try and go and press, get Dominic Calvert-Lewin higher up, but Burnley are so good on the ball, comfortable at receiving. Let's, let's get news of that goal, and at Easter Road, Ailey Barber. Yeah, lengthy VAR check, Ian, but the goal now has been awarded, so St Johnson lead here by that goal to nil. Adama Sidibe with great pace to run clear and showing great composure to knock it in, and it is significant for Hibs that, because they are losing, Dundee are winning. As things stand, Hibernian will not make the top six. It is Hibs nil, St Johnson one. Thank you, Ailey. Of course, tomorrow it's the old firm. 11.30, our coverage begins on Five Live Sport, Rangers Celtic. Game kicks off at midday. Then we've got Manchester United, Liverpool at 3.30, to be followed by Sheffield United Chelsea at half past five. All those games are live on Five Live Sport tomorrow. Forest Green nil, MK Dons two is a latest score. MK Dons then increasing their lead. Wrexham still drawing at Colchester. Mansfield losing at home to Crawley and Stockport leading at Sutton as Everton are attacking. That's how the top of League Two looks at the moment. In this uh, wind-affected game, 
What is the latest at Kenilworth Road early in the second half, Chris Cole? Best moment of the game for Luton, still nil-nil with Bournemouth, Colton Morris twice. Firstly bursting into the box on the left, shot well saved by Neto. Second time round, better chance, slightly closer, again Neto denying him with a good save to his right. Luton nil, Bournemouth nil. I felt for a game of this magnitude, I, I honestly did think that the atmosphere would be better than it is. I think there's, there's nerves around the stadium and there would be even more nerves and tension had Everton have not scored that goal in the first half because Burnley have been playing the better team, they've looked the most likely to get into Everton's 18-yard box and create chances, but you can feel it now. They're bringing noise up a little bit, Everton, and they're looking far more in control than they did that in was the first if, half. That was as if the crowd had been on mute and somebody's just come in and turned the volume control up inside Goodison Park. Or oh, they're all tuned into Five Live as they're listening. <laughs> as they're watching, sorry. As the ball is uh, hit forward, didn't last for long, that uh, little bit of chanting from the, uh, the Gladys Street away towards our left, eight minutes into the second half. There has now been a goal at Luton, Chris Coles. And the atmosphere at Kenilworth Road is flat because Bournemouth have taken the lead. And what a good goal it is from Marcus Tavernier. He hit the post in the first half, similar range, 25 yards out. This time his left foot shot nestled beautifully in the far corner. Luton nil, Bournemouth one. Burnley are attacking, Brun Larson with the cross. Caught by Pickford, Bournemouth on a good run of form. They've won four of their five unbeaten as McNeil runs straight into uh, Estev. Up it goes to Calvert-Lewin, offside, flag will go up on that far side. Remains 1-0 to the home team. Yeah, Estev, the Burnley central defender, had to get that tackle spot on, and he did. Pickford just rolled the ball out into Dwight McNeil, who took, he didn't even touch the ball, he just let the ball roll across his body. And Everton were on the counter-attack, and Estev just came in and just sweeped up the ball and McNeil in the process. That scoreline, though, from Kennel the throw just reinforces and reiterates the importance of three points for the Everton cause today. They could move to 29 points. They'd then have a, a seven-point buffer between themselves and Luton. Everton would still have a game in hand, regardless of any points deduction that could come at the start of next week. So crucial that Everton do get these three points here today with Luton losing. Yeah, and, you, and you wonder if the noise inside Goodison Park will start to increase again if they get wind of that news. Coventry leads United in the championship, Charlie Slater. Where Coventry have doubled the lead, Haji right from one end to another, the perfect counter-attack, a brilliant ball from Eccles, found right at the back post, across the keeper, and as it stands, Leeds are on their way to a first defeat of 2024. Coventry two leads nil. Yeah, they've uh, been unbeaten in 15 in the championship. First league defeat of the of the new year as Burnley trying to get in round the back as Pickford, the referee's blown his whistle anyway. Uh, incidentally, Bristol Rovers nil, Bolton one, Bolton third in League One. Six away from home without a win. Four points adrift of Derby, who next play on Wednesday. So Bolton have taken the lead there. And I think now maybe the crowd reaction is news of that Bournemouth goal at Luton. Yeah, because they're not applauding. Jordan Pickford just picking the ball up to take this free kick inside his own box. Yeah, they're applauding that result. It's all come through. So Luton are behind. And Everton are leading. Could be a significant day in the fight for survival for Everton Football Club here as they look for their first win since mid-December. Back to Fulham, Henry Moran. Fulham nil, Newcastle nil. Newcastle coming out of the blocks quickly in this second half. Anthony Gordon, the step over, the shot saved by a flying Leno. Fulham nil, Newcastle nil. Gomez tidies up, back to uh, to Pickford. Pickford clears away downfield. That was Charlie Taylor who didn't quite get that right with the uh, the back pass to Murich. The ironic cheers as Murich passes it forward to Cullen. And then Everton went to press, and then as O'Shea collects the ball, they stopped pressing, and O'Shea was able to pick his spot forward, and Foster couldn't keep the ball in play. He complains that his shirt was being pulled. Vincent Company is apoplectic, and not for the first time this season down below. He was charged with misconduct after the Chelsea last week. What did he say about the standard of refereeing? Not being good enough, and he doesn't look impressed either today. Yeah, Mikolenko did have a slice of Lyle Foster's shirt as he spun him on the half turn down the line. He was away. And the referee hasn't seen it. And I know it's easy for us to say up here, but 
this is now. What are you made of, Burnley? Brunthwaite does well, guides the ball back under pressure to uh, to Pickford. In League Two, there's been a goal at Colchester, full stop. And it is the home fans celebrating. Colchester won, Wrexham nil, nine minutes played in the second half. The ball fell to John Akinde on the edge of the area. A right-footed shot low into the bottom corner. Colchester won, Wrexham nil. Here is Berger. Berger can't get the shot. Good challenge coming in from Branthwaite again. MK Dons will move into an automatic promotion spot then as it stands. Wrexham, who lost away at Doncaster on Tuesday, behind there in Essex. MK Dons, who are fourth, still leading at Forest green by two goals to nil Burnley trailing here by a goal to nil Crawley incidentally have got a third at Mansfield so second place Mansfield 3-0 down at home at Field Mill now Mansfield nil Crawley three this is the Premier League five live the World Service and BBC Sounds 58 minutes played Everton lead by a goal to nil Cullen to take the corner kick headed out by Mikulenko for Everton James Garner lifts it forward head down chasing after it is McNeil Taylor with the back pass to Muric. Passes the ball forward. And Asignon, that was a poor touch by Asignon. Gives it straight back to Calvert-Lewin. Calvert-Lewin in the area. Calvert-Lewin saved by the legs of Muric to keep out a certain second goal. What a save that is for Muric. He makes up for his own error. Playing out from the back. And I don't think you'll see a better save with your feet. Dom, Dom Calvert-Lewin has just given him the eyes. He looks to go across him and he tries to sneak it in the near post and Muric was equal to it. He puts his foot down, he keeps Burnley in the game. Well, that could have been a, a catalogue of errors as far as Burnley are concerned. They've already made one mistake as Asenjan fires over the cross and it was his mistake that was almost punished by Del Dominic Calvert-Lewin. It remains Everton 1, Burnley 0. Another goal, Villa Park, Pat Murphy. To Brentford, it's now 2-1. Villa didn't deal properly with the cross and Zanka was there. A mishit, he shanked it from right foot to the left, wrong foot of the keeper, sloppy goal in keeping with this match. But as Villa 1, Villa 2 rather, Brentford 1, Tony must be imminent, surely, for Brentford off the bench. Mansfield nil, Crawley four, latest score in League Two. Cardiff one, Hull City two, and to Hibbs, Ailey Barber. Where the home side are at bag level, Chris Cadden on the follow-up after a good save from Maya Lida. He wasn't going to miss, he knocked it into the empty net, and it is Hibernian one, St Johnston one. Another goal, this time at Stoke City, Lee Blakeman. 2-0 to West Brom, Brandon Thomas-Asante in from the left, put in a shot, Iverson saved it, and Jed Wallace followed up with the rebound. Stoke nil, West Brom two. West Brom looking to go unbeaten in nine games. I'll rattle through all the scores and all the divisions with about 10, 15 minutes remaining. We've been playing for half an hour here at Goodison Park. Aston Villa lead Brentford 2-1. Fulham nil, Newcastle nil. Luton nil, Bournemouth one. Wolves still lead West Ham by a goal to nil. And Everton with Gomez switches play. He's picked out. Ashley Young, far side the right. Young with a cross towards Dakari, far post on the stretch behind for a goal kick. Another goal at Villa Park, Pat Murphy. Equaliser from Brentford, rubbish defending again from Aston Villa. Buemo, Buemo left there, ten yards out. Fine right foot volley, Villa two, Brentford two. Brentford, who themselves are still looking over their shoulders, so you would think that they would be, uh, would be safe, but that would take them to 29 points, the same as Everton as it stands with the way that they've just fought back there at, uh, at Villa Park. Here is uh, Branthwaite. Branthwaite with a header over for Fana. Out of play, goes for a throw. Is he Christensen? Yeah, I'm not sure why Muric is dinking that ball into the midfield. For Fana up against Branthwaite, there's a complete height mismatch, and Branthwaite has gobbled up that pass a couple of times in this game so far, and Burnley needed a change, and they're making one. Patino is going to be coming on. For Fana is going off. Let's get an update from uh, Maz at Molyneux. Well, West Ham still trail on an injury now for one of their big players. Jared Bowen went down with what looks like a left hip or lower back issue, and he's had to be withdrawn after some lengthy treatment, Bowen, for Cresto. Antonio and Johnson are on in this second half as well for West Ham. Still Wolves 1, West Ham 0. So Vettinho has come on for Fafana. Vettinho now is playing wide right of a front three with uh, Lyle Foster through the middle and Brune Larson to the left. That's how that uh, he's just changed things around as, uh, as Vincent Company looking for an equaliser. They've drawn their last two away from home, 2-2 at West Ham, and with 10 men, 2-2 at, uh, at Chelsea. No other goals to tell you about elsewhere, but a, a change that uh, that Vincent Company, who turns 38 on Wednesday, your mate. Vincent Company, wow. Yeah. Still so young. Still so young. 
aren't we all? That's where you men are coming and support me there, is he? As, uh, well, you're as, looking very fresh after your trip to Ibiza, then. <laughs> as Brun Larsen on the left, back towards Cullen, goes inside now to uh, to Oderbear. Oderbear corner possession by McNeil, and McNeil is away. The referee has played the advantage as McNeil goes forward. Oderbear was back. McNeil holds on to the ball, passes it forward. Calvert Lewin goes to ground. No challenge from O'Shea. The referee says no penalty. Yeah, O'Shea's given the signal to Dominic Calvert Lewin to say get up. There wasn't contact, he did really well, O'Shea, just to get his body in the way. But excellent counter-attack from Everton, driving from the midfield, Dwight McNeil. Burnley now are attacking, Asignon is, uh, is sent forward. Uh, Burton nil, Oxford United 2. Carlisle, though, still trailing at Northampton, would be relegated today. Tramier 1, Walsall 2, Cardiff 1, Hull 3, and a Queen's Park Rangers, John Akers. Sheffield Wednesday have the lead, it's an extraordinary goal. Gassama with a lovely run, defender goes to clear it, smashes it against Gassama's knee, and it goes in. Huge goal at the bottom. QPR nil, Sheffield Wednesday won. QPR have been going well as well of late. They'd only lost one of their, their last eight. Sheffield Wednesday without a win in four, but uh, leading just before the hour there in, uh, in West London. Tarkovsky volleys the ball forward to Corre. Shields this bouncing ball away from his man. The referee, though, says it'll be a free kick. He was offside. 63 minutes played. Everton still lead by a goal to nil. Back to Molyneux, Masfaruki. Well, Emerson has headed the ball into the back of the net for West Ham. He was wheeling away, celebrating what he thought was the equaliser. The goal has been scrapped, though, for a foul on Semedo in the area just before he connected with the ball. VAR have had a look. It was very soft, to be honest, but it has been disallowed, so it is still Wolves 1, West Ham nil. Burnley still trailing, Cullen's forward ball. Headed away by Seamus Coleman. Calvert-Lewin, Gomez, forward ball. James Garner's made that run forward. McNeil also comes close towards him. Decor is making a run in towards the penalty area. Gomez gets a free kick for Everton. 30 yards out from goal, still leading 1-0, is he? Yeah, that's the quality that Andre Gomez provides from that midfield. You've just got that eye for a pass. He knows exactly when to release the ball. And he just released his midfield partner, James Garner, down the right-hand side. They pick up the second ball, and then they've won themselves a free kick. But Gomez has been exceptional for Everton, bringing in that control and that element of creativity. It's exactly what they've been crying out for. Andre Gomez, who'd uh, made four successive substitute appearances before the start here today. Incidentally, the, uh, the goal that Everton scored was the 300th Premier League goal for Sean Dyche, 249 against or for Burnley and 51 for Everton and that landmark goal coming against his former club and it could be such a precious goal albeit one laced with good fortune Gomez then for the free kick under 30 yards out from goal Everton are attacking the Gladys Street end right footed Gomez goes for goal off target goal kick 1-0 yeah he's gone for the target the position of the free kick doesn't really favour a right-footed delivery, I think it would have been a better option just to fizz the ball in, sort of in, swing it into an area where Everton's height advantage with Branthwaite and Tarkovsky could dominate that first ball. But chance wasted for Everton. The last we heard, third place Wrexham in League Two were behind at Colchester. There's been another goal, Paul Scott. They are not behind anymore. Colchester won, Wrexham won. Talking of landmark goals, Paul Mullin with his 100th in the red of Wrexham. Across from Ryan Barnett, headed home by Mullin. It's Colchester won, Wrexham won. And if anything, Mansfield, with that shock 4-0 defeat or 4-0 loss at home to, uh, to Crawley, are dropping out of the automatic promotion spots now. Wrexham climb a place and MK Dons are into third behind leader Stockport County as it currently stands at the top of a very congested League Two table. Five Live, the World Service. And BBC Sounds here at Goodison Park. Commentary to come from Brighton against Arsenal at 5.30. After sports report, oh, that was a mistake by O'Shea presented the ball then dived in and O'Shea has been sent off Dara O'Shea has been dismissed for a lunge catching McNeil trailing by a goal to nil would you believe he is the seventh Burnley player to be sent off in the Premier League this season and their ill discipline costing them dear yeah what's happened is Burnley are just circulating the ball from the left over to this right-hand side through the centre-backs. 
And Dwight McNeil, who's playing left wing for Everton, has just jumped inside and he's got closer and closer to Dara O'Shea. And as O'Shea thinks he's got time to switch the ball out to his right back, that is when Dwight McNeil jumps, he pounces, he wins the ball, he takes a touch beyond O'Shea and O'Shea's got no other option than to take him out and it's a straight red card and he knows it. You can see it on his face. He just takes a poor touch. It was Dwight high, McNeil wasn't it? sniffs it out. It's high. It's a red card. Advantage again to Everton. Excellent pressing from the Blues. David Coote, who is the VAR, he'll be looking at this at Stockley Park, is uh, unlikely to change that decision. And indeed, O'Shea has gone straight down the tunnel. Burnley are going to make a change as a result. Brownhill's coming on. Trailing by a goal to nil, they're down to ten men now. And another goal at Villa Park, Pat Murphy. Another one to Brentford, the lead 3-2. Splendid counter-attack, cross from the left, turned in by Wieser. Villa 2, Brentford 3. Three goals in nine minutes for Brentford and still no Ivan Tony off the bench. Oh, what a turnaround that is for, uh, for Brentford. That would take them to 31 points and you would think it would mean that they are all but there when it comes to safety. Brun Larson is the player who's going to be sacrificed and Brownhill comes on to replace the Danish international now that O'Shea has been sent off. We're, pre we're midway through the second half. Burton nil, Oxford United three is a latest score in, uh, in League One. And Burnley's problems just go from bad to worse for Vincent Company. Yeah, the game was poised. The game was poised. Burnley have kept themselves in it by staying at 1-0 down. And I can't, I think that that is a massive turning point again in favour of Everton. Burnley down to 10 now, it's a big task from here. Well, they did salvage a, a point with 10 men at, uh, at Chelsea last time out on their travels. They're going to have to dig deep once again against the uh, the Royal Blue of Everton on this occasion. Any sign of a Luton Town fight back, Chris Coles? Oh, they are fighting back OK, and they've just hit the post. They are well on top now. Carlton Morris found space in the area. His left foot shot, Neto stranded. It hit the post, bounced back into danger. The follow-up blocked. Still Luton nil, Bournemouth one. The reality is for Luton is that it's just three points out of a possible 30. Uh, without a win in 10 Premier League games, Everton know all about such a, a barren spell, but they could end that here today with 20 minutes remaining, still leading by a goal to nil. St Mirren nil, Hearts 2 is the latest score in the Scottish Premiership. Cullen in the midfield for Burnley, out to the far side for Taylor in front of their travelling support, the loyal support from East Lancashire, who only seen them win twice on the road so far as a shot is flashed goalwards. And uh, that wasn't too far away from Brownhill. Yeah, Burnley worked the ball out to that left-hand side really well. Intricate passing, and I'm looking up, the crossing opportunities there, but they haven't got the numbers in the box to cross it. And what Brownhill's done is he's just cut inside and in that top D of the box, and he's looked to shape one into the far corner beyond Pickford. He catches it really well, and it's dipping. And Pickford just stands there, rooted to the floor, and he knows he's that was close. If anything, that's a, uh, a warning for uh, for Everton that despite being down to ten men, this game still hasn't been put to bed. Offside, so it'll be a free kick to Burnley. Where will we go next? It's a goal at Stoke City, Lee Blakeman. Goal for Stoke at last. Stoke 1, West Brom 2, Million Man Hearth cutting in from the right. Right foot shot, beat goalkeeper Alex Palmer at his near post. Game on, Stoke 1, West Brom 2. Still 1-0 to, uh, to Everton, 19 minutes remaining in the earlier results. Crystal Palace 2, Manchester City 4, Norwich 1, Ipswich 0. Second place, Leeds United, though, unable to take advantage, looking at their first defeat in the Championship of 2024. 2-0 down at Coventry City, who will look to close the gap to 4 behind Norwich in a playoff position. Leicester City being held by Birmingham as Murich comes out of his penalty area and holds on to it in the Premier League. Aston Villa 2, Brentford 3, Fulham 0, Newcastle 0, Luton 0, Bournemouth 1, and another penalty at Molyneux, Maz Faruqi. This one's for West Ham. Lucas Pakitar just about to take this, this to level things up for West Ham. He's taking a long time, a long marauding run-up, and eventually slots it just inside the right post. Jose Sarr gets the right direction, couldn't keep it out. It was given as a handball off uh, Max Kilman and Emerson strike, striking his arm in the area, the Wolves captain, and it is 1-1. 1-1 at, uh, at Molyneux. 
We've got European action to look forward to next week on Five Live. Tuesday, Real Madrid against Manchester City. Thursday, Liverpool against Atalanta in the quarter-finals of the Europa League. Everton with Calvert-Lewin. Running forward, the Everton goal scorer gets a lucky break, enters the penalty area, still going, Calvert-Lewin, and then flashes the shot left-footed off target into the Gladys Street for a goal kick. Everton still lead by a goal to nil, 17 minutes remain. Hull Huddersfield in the Rugby League, Richard Stead. For the second time in a couple of weeks, Ian Huddersfield have put 50-plus points on Hull. Two second-half tries from Tui Lola here, and at the moment it's a very one-sided scoreboard. Hull FC 16, Huddersfield Giants 52. Dundee 2, Motherwell 0, Tranmere 1, Walsall 3, the latest scores on the Scottish Premiership and League 2. After Sports Report, we've got commentary at the Amex. Brighton against Arsenal at 5.30. Team News, Conor McNamara. And Arsenal can return to the top of the table with the win here. Roberto De Serbi makes five changes to his Brighton team. Tarek Lamptey and Purvis Estupignon are back at full-backs. Julian Cisse starts and Danny Welbeck too against his old club. Mikel Arteta made five changes for the win over Luton. Four of them come back in for this one. Rice and Jorginho to the midfield. Gabriel Jesus and Saka to the attack. Danny Gavidon with Connor at 5.30. Manchester City level on points with Liverpool at the top, 70 points. Liverpool still top due to their uh, goal difference as Burnley forward. Here is Foster, head to the D, threads the ball through. Cullen was almost there. Branthwaite was so alert. Superb defending by Branthwaite. Oh, that last minute, 30 seconds to a minute of football. I urge you to watch back later on Match of the Day if it's on because that was impressive from Dwight McNeil. He went and pressed every single Burnley player. Burnley actually played through it all, and they nearly got Josh Cullen in through on goal, one-on-one -on -one with Pickford, but it was Brantford, Brantthwaite's leg. He stretched it out, and he's lucky it didn't go into the back of his own net, but it's a Burnley corner. Judging by the amount of uh, chances that we've had, I would suggest that that will make the edit for match the day. <laughs> because they, they haven't really had much choice to fill the 10 minutes. Match of the day tonight on BBC One. Corner kick for Burnley, looking for an equaliser. Headed out by Tarkovsky, headed back by Asignon, headed further away by Tarkovsky, and there's been a goal at Luton Town, Chris Coles. Equaliser for Luton, thoroughly deserved. They have been very good in this second half. Not the prettiest of goals in terms of the build-up, but the finish was excellent. Jordan Clark, just inside the area, rifled into the bottom corner. Kenilworth Road alive, Luton 1, Bournemouth 1. It will still keep them in the, uh, in the relegation zone takes them to 23 points if it was to stay like that. Everton still lead by a goal to nil. St Mirren have got a goal back at home to Hearts. St Mirren 1, Hearts 2, Reading 0, Lincoln 1. Lincoln on a really good run of form, unbeaten in 12, of which they've won 10. They're leading again at Reading. Ball threaded through. Here is Calvert-Lewin. The angle is tight. Muric off his goal line with a smothering save. All of a sudden, Izzy, we could be in for a very exciting 15 minutes, I feel. Yeah, it's really turned up the volume, and it was that... That bit of pressing from Dwight McNeil, he just took ownership and went off on one and just went and pressed everything and it got the crowd off their feet. And it's just added or injected a whole new lease of life into this match. The ten men of Burnley are still fighting. Free kick goes in favour of, uh, of Burnley. Didn't seem to be too much untoward of a challenge on, on Foster, did they? Yeah, it's right in front of the, uh, the linesman. Brantwaite's still complaining in front of him, but it's given Burnley a free kick. The fans are hating it. There's a free kick for Burnley in a fairly decent position to deliver, but I'm just looking at that Burnley squad and I'm thinking, you haven't got much of a threat inside the box. Perhaps work it short. Use your players, the ball players that you've got in the side to work it. It looks like they're going to deliver. It would certainly go down in the uh, in the soft category, the award of a free kick for uh, for Burnley. There may be due one, though, after, after midweek. 14 minutes to go to half-time. Cullen to take it for the 10 men of Burnley. Right footed, floated, headed back by a step. Taylor keeps it alive, hooked away by Young inside the area. Headed back by Asignon. Coleman's header forces De Corey out wide and he'll keep the ball in play, looking for James Garner. Asignon is there. Garner tries to win it back. Out then it goes for a Burnley throw over on that far side, the left. We've got just under 14 minutes remaining, Everton still lead by a goal to nil, 1-1 at Kenilworth Road, and when you're inside the last 15 minutes, that's Luton Town time. They have scored so many late, late goals as Burnley. After that sending off of O'Shea, with O'Taylor. Just made him Irish by calling him O'Taylor. <laughs>
Oh, no. Very good. Touche. Or oh, touche. Uh, throw to Everton. Tell you what I'll do, I'll run through the latest scores. We'll start in the Scottish Premiership. In fact, no, before that, there's been a goal at Craven Cottage. It's no longer goalless, Henry Moran. Fulham nil, Newcastle won. They've been so poor for much of today, but Fabian Scher has somehow squeezed it in at the near post for his fifth of the season. Fulham nil, Newcastle won. Keeps alive their hopes of a place in European football for next season. Calvert-Lewin is pursuing this ball. Back it goes to Murich, clears it first time after his horror show that led to the Everton goal. You might have nightmares about that. There is activity down the bench below. Harrison's going to be coming on for uh, for Everton. Foster makes the run over on that far side, the left for Burnley. Enters the penalty area, delivers a cross, comes off the outstretched leg of Gomez. Asignon has a swish of that of his right boot and didn't connect. And Pickford has it in his arms. In the Scottish Premiership, Dundee 2, Motherwell 0, Hibbs 1, St Johnston 1. Kilmarnock leads struggling Ross County by a goal to nil. Bottom of the table, Livingston nil, Aberdeen nil, St Mirren one, Hearts two. They're the latest scores in the Scottish Premiership. Back to Luton, Chris Coles. Luton one, Bournemouth one, but the temperature is rising in the Kenilworth Road sunshine and tensions are rising too. Andoni Iriola, the Bournemouth manager, has just been yellow carded by referee Andy Madley. Iriola's been fuming since the Luton equaliser. I'm not sure why, but he's been booked for his troubles. Luton won, Bournemouth won. Harrison's going to be coming on for Everton. Jay Rodriguez looks like he's going to be coming on as well for Burnley. He's getting his final instructions. The, uh, the veteran forward, Decore, will be the player who's going to be coming off. For Harrison, in fact, it looks like it's going to be a, a double change. Beto is also going to be coming on for uh, for Everton, who still have a slender lead here with 11 minutes remaining of normal time. Berger at the back for Burnley to Murich. Out it goes to Esther. Berger is the player who's now filling in in the absence of the dismissed Dara O'Shea. Taylor lifts it forward, Foster loses out in the challenge, Gomez picks up the loose ball along the ground, finds Calvert-Lewin, Young on the overlap, McNeil with him, Calvert-Lewin drifts into a central area, Burnley had a number of men back, not much width for Everton, goes to McNeil who shoots, left-footed, and it goes out for a, a goal kick, 1-0 to Burnley, Izzy Christensen. Yeah, Calvert-Lewin just finding himself in loads of space on the right-hand side of Burnley's 18-yard box. He passes it to McNeil and he doesn't really have any other options, Dwight McNeil. So he just lets fire, he knows he can find the net from there. He just cuts inside onto his left foot, no pressure on him. He looks to shape it beyond Murich. It's gone way over the bar. There's going to be a double change for Everton and a triple change being made for Burnley. Goal at Villa Park, Pat Murphy. Equaliser for Aston Villa from Ollie Watkins, made by Bailey, right foot cross deflector and a towering header from Watkins, beating the keeper, his 18th of the season in the league, Villa 3, Brentford 3. Straight to Stoke, penalty, Lee Blakeman. And Stoke have scored it, it's 2-2, two -two. Vidigal with the penalty, initially saved, followed in with the rebound, into the roof of the net, and from two down, it's Stoke 2, West Brom 2. The two fullbacks are going to be coming off for, uh, for Burnley, uh, it'll be Rodriguez replacing Asignon. Taylor's going to come off as well. Goodmanson is the other player who's going to be coming on as uh, activity down below. Everton, meanwhile, with a cross from the right-hand side by Young, cleared by Asignon. And I'm hearing, Henry, that that goal has been ruled out. It has. Everyone was ready to go once again, and suddenly referee Sam Allison was told in his ear, have a look and see if this is a foul. Dan Byrne against his former club, a judge to have fouled Calvin Bassey. We're back to nil-nil. Fulham nil, Newcastle nil. Coventry were leading Leeds United 2-0. There's been a goal. Charlie Slater. And Leeds are back in this one with 14 minutes remaining. Coventry 2, Leeds 1. Jorginho Rutter somehow manages to keep the ball alive six yards out, shuffles it over to the substitute, Joel Piru, who scores from around six yards out. Leeds not out of this yet. Coventry 2, Leeds 1. Still, the five changes are yet to be made. Goal at Fratton Park, Flo Pollock. Portsmouth 3, Shrewsbury 1. Colby Bishop with his 20th league goal of the season. Pumpy have had all the pressure, and the pressure has paid Colby Bishop. 
with the volley, Portsmouth 3, Shrewsbury 1. Dundee 2, Motherwell 1, Hibs 1, St Johnston 2, a latest scores on the Scottish Premiership, Everton still lead by a goal to nil. We've got eight minutes remaining of normal time, here come the changes, so Rodriguez will replace Asignon, Goodmanson will come on for Odebear, Amduni to replace Taylor, they're the Burnley changes and the Everton changes will be, uh, Beto is going to replace Calvert-Lewin, after going what was it an 18 game goalless run in the Premier League two in two his penalty against Newcastle and a rather fortuitous goal here today and then the other change is Decore coming off for Harrison so we've tidied up those Izzy Christensen yeah just like for like if you like for Everton just resting the legs of Ashley Young and Dominic Calvert-Lewin who's putting an outstanding shift in today for his team and just Jack Harrison coming in just to solidify that right hand side in front of Seamus Coleman, who we've not even mentioned in the second half. He's not got forward as much, and then Beto coming on just to provide that option for Everton down the channels, pinning the Burnley centre-backs, see if they can get up the pitch, and then Burnley obviously have to go for it now, chuck the chick kitchen sink at it, as they say. Rodriguez coming on, probably a change of approach from Vincent Company's team. They're going to have to get the ball into Everton's box somehow. Seven minutes remain of normal time. Mansfield have got what will be a consolation. Mansfield 1, Crawley Town 4. They're dropping out of the automatic places in League 2. These are the latest scores in League 2. Wimbledon 1, Salford 0. Accrington 0, Crewe 0. Barrow 0, Swindon 2. Bradford City still lead Gillingham by a goal to 0. Colchester 1, Wrexham 1. Forest Green 0, MK Dons 2. Grimsby 1, Newport 0. Mansfield 1, Crawley 4. Morecambe 0, Doncaster 2. Notts County 2, Harrogate 0. Notts County, that could be their first home win in 2024. Sutton 1, Stockport County, the leaders 3, Tranmere 1, Walsall 3. Goal at Craven Cottage, Hedden Moran. And Newcastle do now have the lead, stung into action by the perceived injustice as the disallowed goal. Bruno Guimaraes running in to follow up, smashing into the bottom corner, full of nil, Newcastle 1. And a goal at Molyneux, Mas Faruqi. They turned it around, West Ham now lead. This goal came straight from a James Ward-Prowse corner. It kind of swerved its way back in, in past Joe Cesar, in just inside the, the right-hand corner post. So West Ham now lead after trailing. Wolves 1, West Ham 2. McNeil forward for Everton, sends over a cross from the left. Well cleared by Estev under pressure. Six yards out for his own goal, out for an Everton throw, far side the right. Yeah, Dwight McNeil just fed down the channel. He run onto the ball. And then he looked for that early cross inside the box and Estev has been absolutely outstanding at the back for Burnley. He's had a really good game and another excellent clearance there just to deny Beto that if he got his foot on that, it would have been perhaps his first touch of the game. Yeah, Motherwell have got an equaliser at uh, Dundee. Dundee 2, Motherwell 2, Middlesbrough 2, Swansea City 0. Ball in from the right-hand side, McNeil couldn't control it, picked up by Murich. These are the latest scores in League One then. Uh, Blackpool still lead Cambridge by a goal to nil. Bolton nil, third place Bolton Wanderers one, Burton nil, Oxford United four, Charlton two, Barnsley one, Charlton looking to extend their unbeaten run to 11, Exeter leads Stevenage by a goal to nil, Lake Norian two, Cheltenham nil, Northampton one, Carlisle United nil, Carlisle United will be relegated. Portsmouth 3, Shrewsbury 1, Reading 0, Lincoln 1, Wigan 0, Port Vale 0 are the other latest scores. We have under five minutes remaining and Everton still lead by a goal to nil. Let's get an update from Northampton, Mark Webber. Yeah, it's Northampton 1, Carlo United 0. The City and Lakes have six minutes to swim against the tide and save their League 1 status. They're not showing much endeavour, then I have to say it's still 1-0 to Northampton. That's the man very much in the flow. Reading have equalised at home to Lincoln. Reading 1, Lincoln 1. As uh, Burnley down to ten men after that O'Shea sending off midway through the second half. Pass the ball back to, uh, to Murich. Murich, short forward ball, Brownhill is there to take it off him, Berger, Everton with uh, Decore, so it wasn't, didn't, Decore didn't leave the field then, did he? And, uh, yeah, Ashley, Ashley Young went off. It was Ashley Young who'd, uh, who'd gone off, the, uh, the little app that we get had told us that it was going to be Decore as he slides into that challenge and has done, oh, I was going to say he's done exceptionally well. And he's a judge to have fouled Estev. That was a, yeah. a strange decision. I, I, I think Estev has done really well again against Beto. The ball's just fed into the channel and it's a foot race between the two of them. Beto tries to get his body in, shoulder barge Estev, and I think 
the positioning of Estev just means that he gets the ball first, he does. And Beto catches him. On that far side, Coleman up to, uh, to Beto, tries to lay it off towards Gomez. Gomez now in the centre circle, forward ball. He releases Beto. Beto is away, Beto goes to ground. Referee Michael Oliver has a look at it and says nothing. Yeah, I think he's looking for it. The crowd don't think so, though. They've gone mad. They think it's a penalty, but I'm just watching the replay and I, the first glance in real time. I think it was really good defending. Beto is looking for that. He takes the touch across. I think it's Estev's body. It's not a penalty for me. He lumbered his way towards goal, didn't he? Yep. He never felt that he was going to go clear at any point and get the shot away. And uh, the outcry of that just gives you another indication of the nerves because Everton are edging closer to three valuable points elsewhere in the Premier League. Aston Villa 3, Brentford 3, Fulham 0, Newcastle 1, Luton 1, Bournemouth 1, Wolves 1, West Ham United 2. Let's get another update from Ailey at Easter Road. Worse and Johnson have gone back in front. They lead by two goals to one. Tony Gallagher with his first ever goal in senior football. Going, uh, knocking in from a corner kick. Vital for St Johnston in their bid to avoid the playoff place at the bottom of the table. It is Hibernian 1, St Johnston 2. Two minutes remain of normal time. Burnley have got a free kick almost on the halfway line. Murich to take it. Goes out towards that far side. Volleyed away by Beto. It was Colchester 1, Wrexham 1. There's been a goal. Paul Scott. It is now Colchester 1, Wrexham 2. The well side coming from behind to take the lead a long throw from the left hand side headed in by Max Kluwerth glancing into the far bottom corner Colchester 1 Wrexham 2 so the leaders the leaders Stockport third place Wrexham and fourth place MK Dons all winning second place Mansfield losing heavily at home as we have 60 seconds remain there's been a goal at Leicester City, Aaron Paul. Leicester potentially won it. The subs are on the pitch. Gorgeous ball from Eunice Hatchard. And at the back post, it was Steffi Mavadidi with the downwards header. They've huffed, they've puffed, they've blown the Birmingham house down. Leicester 2, Birmingham 1. Remember earlier, Ipswich Town lost in the East Anglian derby at Carrow Road. Norwich 1, Ipswich Town 0. These are the latest scores elsewhere in the Championship, as that scoreline, as it stands, will take Leicester top. Blackburn 0, Southampton 0, Cardiff 1, Hull 3. Coventry City still lead Leeds United by two goals to one. Huddersfield 0, Millwall 0. Leicester 2, Birmingham 1, Middlesbrough 2, Swansea 0, QPR 0. Sheffield Wednesday 1, uh, and that would actually take them level with Birmingham City on 42 points. Stoke. 2, West Brom 2, Sunderland 0, Bristol City 0, Watford and Preston remains goalless at Vicarage Road. No other goals elsewhere. We're about to find out how much added on time there will be. And this is still tight. Yeah, and Beto, you know what, he's just come on and he's causing all sorts of problems for Burnley. He's just getting his body in, he's just protecting the ball, he's causing mayhem up there and he's just disrupting the flow of the game. And that's exactly what Everton need to do at the moment. They're just getting up the park, teasing Burnley into playing out again, and then they're going to try and nick it. What have Burnley got left in them? Five minutes have added on time. We will find out now in those subsequent minimum five minutes to be added on. As Cullen floats the ball forward, off the chest for Mikolenko, closed down by Rodriguez, balloons up in the air, headed away by Branthwaite, handball, free kick to Everton. Lake Norian three, Cheltenham nil is the latest score in League One. Hasn't been pretty, but it's all one of those occasions when it's all about the result for Everton. 100%. It, it really hasn't. I mean, some of the football that Burnley have played in the first half was pretty, but Everton have been in this situation so many times where they haven't necessarily been the better team, but they've been the better team making better decisions when it really matters. And they've just been really pragmatic about their approach, just pushing Burnley back into areas where they're uncomfortable. Their worst run of form for 67 years is about to be banished and it couldn't have come at a better time as Sean Dyche extremely animated in that technical area as Burnley with Bettinho with a back pass to Murich has to go long. Branthwaite doesn't misjudge that, I think the, the wind probably didn't help him out. Here is Rodriguez, passes the ball out now towards that far side. Goodmanson stands over the cross, headed away by Mikolenko. Cullen keeps it alive for Burnley. 
Here is uh, Brownhill. Berger joins the attack. The ten men still fighting here for Burnley. But Everton trying to keep them at bay from their penalty area. Berger forward. And Dooney challenge from Decore. Still they lose the ball. And Burnley win it back. And Dooney. Decore again breaks it up. And a break is on now for Everton. Decore running forward. It's two against two. He finds Beto. Beto forced a fraction out wide, edge of the area. Beto enters the penalty area, challenge comes in, ball runs behind for a corner, and there's been a late goal at Luton Town, Chris Cole. How big, how big could this be for Luton? They may have won it in the last minute of normal time. Carlton Morris just underneath the crossbar to poke in across into the corner. What a huge moment this could be for Luton. They lead Bournemouth by two goals to one into stoppage time. They are absolutely incredible, the way that they're always able to get late, late goals. So Luton have come from behind and lead Bournemouth by two goals to one. Corner taken short for Everton. Decore plays it in towards the penalty area. Here is James Garner, goes to ground inside the area, shot fired in from Harrison, blocked. He's actually stayed down as, uh, as Garner. Referee, though, Michael Oliver, looked like he had a good view of that. That wouldn't be sufficient to take them out of the relegation zone, incidentally. They would move level with Nottingham Forest on 25 points. Forest would stay out of the relegation zone because of their superior goal difference. The deadlock has been broken at Huddersfield. Katie Smith. And it could be a huge goal in the 94th minute. Huddersfield Town 1, Millwall 0. The corner from the right-hand side, the home side, have been pushing. The initial header saved, and then Healy, the substitute, putting it in the back of the net. Huddersfield Town 1, Millwall 0. We have 90 seconds remaining of added on time. Everton still lead by a goal to nil. Izzy Christensen. What Sean Dyche asks of his wide players, Dwight McNeil, Ashley Young, and then Jack Harrison, who's come on for Ashley Young, is such a big ask. A lot of lots of running. And Dwight McNeil has been absolutely superb for Everton. Burnley have got a free kick. Murich goes long for Burnley. Out it goes to that far side. Goodmanson in front of the travelling support. Can he work over the cross? By my watch, we're entering the last 60 seconds of the minimum five to be added on. Ball played out by Bettino towards Goodmanson once again on the left. Goodmanson with a cross in over everybody's heads. Berger, right-hand side of the penalty area. Cullen makes the run forward, not utilised. Berger waits. Berger looks for the cross, blocked. Comes out to Bettino, lifts it in first time, deep into the penalty area, headed behind by James Garner. I don't think he got the shout. Corner kick to Burnley. No, it was a nervous header by the captain, Seamus Coleman. He's just communicating to Jordan Pickford and the players around him to say, give me a shout, lads, because he's just conceded a corner completely unnecessarily. Burnley are going to swing it in. So it's a corner kick far side the left. 15 seconds remain. Goodmanson with the outswinging corner. Tarkovsky meets it and then volleys the ball before it can hit the ground from his own header. And James Garner is in pursuit. And the ball then is played forward, it kept alive by Goodmanson, in play over on that far side. Goodmanson's cross from the left, headed away by Branthwaite once again. Harrison nicks it away from Estep. Vincent Company just tried to push Harrison away. Sean Dyche is close, the referee blows the whistle. And Everton's worst run of form in 67 years has finally come to an end. A fortuitous goal on the stroke of half-time gives them three precious points, Izzy Christensen. Absolutely massive. Three points for whoever won this game. And it's Everton. You can see the Burnley players on the floor. They're dead on their knees. They put in so much into that last 15 minutes with 10 men, but it just wasn't enough. And Everton are just clinging on. A huge three points for them. An enormous result for, uh, for Everton. Elsewhere, Carlisle relegated. They've conceded a second. Northampton 2, Carlisle 0. But down at the bottom of the table at Goodison Park, Everton 1, Burnley 0. And let's go straight to Mark Webber for details of Carlisle's relegation. Yes, Northampton Town 2, Carlisle United 0. 335 Carlisle fans stayed to the end to witness their club's short tenure in League One football. They witnessed what was probably what they've witnessed all season. Average performance is not clinical enough, and it may be some irony that the club they went up with uh, last season, Northampton Town, scored in the dying minutes when Ali Koike was just allowed to run the 